to the creek, actually it was the proximity uh, to the county designated stream conservation area, which the creek happens to be in. That's all? That's it. Thank you. I have a question. <clears throat> On the second encroachment issue, I just want to see if I understand what was proposed and uh, make sure it makes sense to me. Um, it appears that the motion was to request the right of encroachment on district property. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And the nays were three and the ayes were none, and the motion was noted as carried. Wouldn't that mean that it failed? Okay. So the motion should have been should be noted as failed. <laughs> um, it was just on, yeah. I wanted to ask the chief on the overtime. Yes, uh, we did yeah. have some overtime. 33 was all going up. Yeah, we had uh, we had one one guy who was staff, a couple of staff center for his OES engine for about 17 days. So majority, and so we, we had to pay his overtime plus backfill of his shifts. But the majority of that would be paid back to the city. Board has no more questions or comments? Yes, yeah, I have a question. Either? Okay. 2467 last go for $4,347. Mm -hmm. You can refill me on that. Is that That's our annual fee? Annual fee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 2469 County Council, 10890. Uh, legal services, majority of them uh, related to park matters. Park matters. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to know if you've paid the uh, entire unfunded liability for. Um, Retirement under 2418 for the tune of $321,340. For this fiscal year, correct? Correct. But uh, the normal rate so high. Oh, of course. This is the unfunded mm -hmm. and the what is known as the ARC, the annual required contribution in order to make up for the deficit um, for those retirement funds. And that is 20% 20, 20 higher than it was last year. I just wanted to note that. But in the process, we saved something like $11,400 for the entire year from paying it off all at once as opposed to on a monthly basis. That's all I've got. Thank you to the board. Any comments from the public? It's the, the consent calendar, so both bills and agenda. Uh, just for the minutes, from the 17th, I was actually present. 
anyone else from the public? Are we taking questions about bills yet? That's okay. The consent calendar includes the draft minutes and the bills together, so that's why. Oh, together. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, 2462 is a Six Flags field trip. And I'm just curious, it's over four grand. And is this covered by all the children that are in the camps that go to the Six Flags field trip? That's part of the field trip, um, and we are getting money back uh, through the camp fees. Oh, oh, great. Okay. And then I was also wondering what the um, 2469. County Council fourth quarter for the Parks Department, $10,134. What are the parks? Um, that was um, um, one of our neighbors uh, filed a Park lawsuit legal against. Matter. Sorry, thank you. Legal sorry. matter. A legal matter against. The, well, sorry. It was, a, it, was a legal, it was a legal matter involving the parks. Oh, okay. And then the other thing, and I'm pretty sure I finally figured it out MIP stands for Music in the Park. Mm -hmm. So, the um, it appears that 720 plus 800 plus 960 went to Luke. Is that how the money works? The money goes to Luke first, and then Luke pays Bill. And That's then Bill correct. Pays the well, no, uh, Bill is not part of the uh, payment equation. The uh, money goes to through Luke, and Luke pays the bill. And is it cash? They pay him in cash. Correct. Yes. And then, did we rent um, the stage? We That's do. correct. So we are paying somebody to set up the stage every time music in the park takes place and break it down, uh -oh. which is a, actually oh, a good. Cool. It's actually a good deal because otherwise we would have to pay a few thousand dollars for it and um, yeah. have the uh, headache of storing it. So, so is it three hundred every time, or just? That's correct. Thank you. Any other questions from the public on the consent calendar? Going once, going twice. Um, may I have the motion to approve consent calendar with the suggested changes? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to item D, which is the public comment open time for items not on the agenda. Um, we have full house. I'm assuming most of you are here because of the next item. Um, so let's see who would like to take oh. the stage first. Stephen? No. Um, I, you, you talked about the consent calendar, but you, you didn't talk about the draft minutes of the, the uh, public hearing or the special meeting. Or was um, that, the that was consent calendar is includes the draft minutes of both meetings and the bills paid, and I stated it twice. Um, so public comments not on the, on the items not on the agenda? Linda? Um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about the park maintenance employees. I, I really think they've done a great job without having a decent maintenance shed storage facility for so many years. And of course, everybody agrees that the dilapidated structure should be replaced. But fortunately, our guys are not at the facility that often except to retrieve and return vehicles and tools and materials and stuff. But um, they're able to manage really well, and, and I don't know how, with the dilapidated structure that they have. Um, I think their top concern is keeping our Marinwood parks beautifully maintained, which they do. And I want to say the men make us all proud, doing their jobs with obvious pride, and helping keep our community the one that many throng to live in, thanks to Victor, Marco, and Esteban. And even though they're out and about most of the time, I do see them once in a great while at the, um, the trailer office, and I hope the office can stay, but I think the guys are doing a great job under the circumstances. Thank you very much. Anybody else would like to do the state at this point? If not, yes. then, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, may I speak? Yes. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we're embarking on an important process for the future of our community. And I guess I want to state once again that, you know, I, first of all, I think everybody in this room, maybe everybody in the community or 
95% of the people want to replace the maintenance shed. And um, I think, you know, this is a time where we can, you know, share ideas. We don't have to resort to personal attacks, which, quite frankly, the critics of the, the proposal have had to suffer. Steve, and may I just remind you, this is not on the agenda. The shed I, is I, on the agenda, so we'll talk about the shed later. I, I'm not talking about the shed. I'm talking about the, the how we approach this very important juncture in the future of our community. Um, let's keep it civil and nice. And I think there's, there's agreement here, so let's just try to find out what the best option is in front of us. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, just um, a recommendation. I think it would be great to, if possible, hearing from the three maintenance workers who use the facility, because it sounds like a lot of people are speaking on their behalf in terms of what their wants and needs are. Mm -hmm. So hearing from them directly and giving us an opportunity to understand how they individually use it and what they're looking for, um, so that way we meet the people's needs who are actually using it. Again, this is regarding the shed, and we'll be talking about it later. And okay, I'm, I'm and I will respond. About the feedback from them. Well, we hearing. can we can talk about okay. it at this point. Um, okay. Everybody is eager to start the conversation, so let's move on. Um, item E um, E one is the uh, resolution 2018-08, adopting the mitigated negative declaration and mitigation monitoring program for the Marine Wood Park maintenance facility replacement project. Um, again, since um, we have um, many emotions, op opinions, I would love to uh, keep it structured as we proceed through this. Um, I'd like Eric to introduce this item. Um, board will then ask any technical questions of um, either Eric or anybody else. Then um, we'll uh, open it to the public and everybody will have plenty of opportunity to speak but at some point we'll close the public comment and then uh, the board is going to make a motion discuss it only among the board and after that the decision will be made is that understand, understood okay. um, so Eric would you please open <coughs> Yeah, I gave you a pretty detailed uh, memo within the uh, board packet that talks about the process for moving forward with this project. It, uh, it clearly states out what is included in the packet, which is a resolution 2018 08, uh, which would need to be approved adopting the mitigated negative declaration as well as the mitigation monitoring program. Uh, it includes the initial study, the declaration itself, and the monitoring program itself. Uh, the whole packet also includes all written public comments received in response to the mitigated negative declaration study. It includes staff response to applicable public comments, and it also includes correspondence from the State of California Governor's Office of Planning and Research, acknowledging that the district has complied with the State Clearinghouse review requirements for draft environmental documents. Uh, and then it also gives you some clear guidelines in there as to uh, how the board needs to consider the whole record. Uh, there is one item of note that needs to be made in here that uh, in accordance with Title 14 CCR 15073.5 C-4, uh, the board can add new information to the negative declaration which merely clarifies, amplifies, or makes insignificant changes to the neg deck. Um, there is one suggested change in here for mitigation measure 1 A dot B dot dash one of the initial study, which can be found on page 11, to amend the initial study to state the Marin of CSD shall apply to the Marin County Community Development Agency for a site plan review or design review as determined by the county and implement any condition of approval of the county permit. Um, so if, should this document be adopted tonight, that change would be made within the initial study. Uh, Otherwise, uh, I'm sure you've had opportunity, I would hope, to go through what is ultimately about 180 pages worth of uh, documents that are found in here. 
I'm happy to answer any questions that may come in, but the action on the table for the board is to uh, make a motion to approve and or invoke either to approve or not to approve. Thank you, Eric. Any um, clarification needed from the board? No. All right. Um, so now we'll open it to the public. Um, please raise your hand if you'd like to speak. Hi. I guess I've just got a question. This is a process question, but I've, I've heard that we don't have a full plan in the main deck. It's not an official proposal anywhere. And so is it even legal to move forward on it if you don't have the actual building embedded in the name deck? Um, apparently it is. It is a conundrum to many, uh, yeah. uh, but uh, apparently we, we are following the law. Yeah. Anyone else? Stephen? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I did a response to basically a rebuttal response to what uh, was responded to in the original document. Did you all receive it? I received it, yeah. Okay. And um, so I'd like to go through it. Um, essentially, um, you know, a lot of the concerns really were not adequately addressed, and I'd like to go through it. Um, you know, as I've said before, there is a, a path to success here. It's in a smaller footprint design, indicated in option three. Um, and what I'll do is just address the concerns one by one. Uh, and um, so, going down, uh, I'm, on page two, I made the uh, assumption, uh, the wrong statement that there was no uh, permit for some items in the park, and that's not true because there were actually quite a few uh, documents in the uh, microfiche uh, prior to 1999. What I didn't find is um, the plumbing permit for the modular building. I know that uh, Irv Schwartz was the uh, general contractor. Maybe he can shed some light in it. I did, did find the, uh, in, in, uh, the electrical uh, permit. But, in, but there have been, we've done a lot of work since 2005 and um, there's been no permits, or at least there's no permits listed in the uh, county website. So I guess what I'm saying is um, we're not really following the laws here, and we need to do that. Um, the uh, licensed land surveyors, it was alleged, um, are not considered the, the uh, final arbiters for the top of stream bank de designation. This needs to be done by a licensed biologist because it's a biological assessment. It's not actually not a, uh, a place assessment. Um, so I don't think we have that right. The um, general manager um, uh, has not been forthcoming with information about this project the month of June. Uh, I repeatedly asked him when he was going to be submitting, and he evaded it until I got uh, a notice on June 30th. Um, we still have water runoff from the large 3,200-square-foot 3, roof. This represents a 50% increase from the current facility, both facilities, uh, and, uh, you know, both the modular and the current uh, shed. Um, and uh, I will still maintain that the vehicles need to turn around in the meadow because um, there's no way that you can turn around a Ford F-250 uh, that's 22 feet long in the space given at the end of the uh, second, uh, uh, at the end of the shed. So I don't know if we're, we're gonna, what we're going to see tonight, whether, whether we're going to see a new design, but I'm assuming on the initial design. Um, as far as the FEMA flood zone, um, it, you know, uh, there was an allegation where it's not in the flood zone, but it, I, from the FEMA map, the FEMA map's obviously not correct, and you can see it on the Marin map. Um, there are many old uh, map sources that show streams in the maintenance shed area, and uh, it's actually published in Joseph uh, Slaymaker's thesis, uh, Material Culture of 
whatever it is, come to Katcha. Someone probably knows in this, this room. Um, in response to the response I received from the architect, archaeological, Mr. Coop, or whatever his name, Mr. Roop, who, yeah, I'm, I'm just having trouble with the word. Um, he really obscured the fact that there is a major cultural resource, significant cultural resource, this is in his words, that is yards away from the <laughs> maintenance shed. And um, I think that's really, that basically almost dis discredits his work. I'm sure it's probably pretty good, but why would he obscure that through language that most people wouldn't understand? I've provided the actual map from uh, Slaymaker's work. You can see that there's settlements all along the opposite bank of uh, Marinwood or Miller Creek, and there's actually a location close to where the maintenance shed is located today. In conclusion, we can have a new maintenance shed, but it needs to be situated out the, outside the 120-foot stream conservation setback. So that's that's a major difference between what's being proposed. Option three is may not actually even uh, reach that objective, but it comes close. And so option three is a, is a narrow uh, side access garage that would run along the fence next to the uh, uh, shed office. And I think that if we explore that, we, we will have success, we'll save money, save time, save grief. And I know that a lot of people are going to appreciate that they're park is now preserved. I want to add just one last point and that is the question of land. Um, the current uh, uh, proposal takes up a, a very large portion of land. It, 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 uh, it spans two um, housing ha uh, house lots plus the uh, area outside it where they have to park trucks and vehicles which is not actually indicated on the uh, site plan. Um, you know, these lots, we're now all millionaires, I guess, but the, the lots are worth 750 apiece, 750,000 apiece. I think we're talking about millions of dollars worth of acreage uh, for this maintenance facility. And we really, not only, we, we, we can't look at it as a no-cost resource. It is an expensive resource, and we need to use it intensively. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Stephen. Would anybody else like to say something? Please I'm going to read this just so I can get through it without lots of mistakes. First, I want to thank every all you guys up there for at least thinking about what we're all talking about and what we're saying, because it is a large project. It's something that hasn't been done before, at least in my generation. So the one thing I do want to remind everybody is this project will be greeting us every time we enter the panhandle and the multi-use trail. So it's just something to think about, you know, as you enter the park, where the panhandle park goes, this is the first thing you'll see. Um, my first thought when I was viewing the drawings of just one site, but I've got probably 10 or 15 drawings in this, was something that seemed out of kilter, and I was unsure if there was going to be a driveway in a new section of trail. Now, I'd seen written comments, but I didn't see anything on the 10 or 12 drawings that I had. Now, maybe I missed them, and I know that there was one drawing a couple of years ago that showed a, a trail along the edge of the bank, but I haven't seen any this year. So, I wasn't, um, so I have no idea where they're planned. And I was also unable to find anywhere the actual footage for the width of the central Eichler building. Um, when the width was asked for a couple of times, we were told that it's in the drawings. Well, the, the length is in the drawings. It's like 76 and a half feet, but the width is not in the drawings. I'm sure the square be footage is in answer. the drawing. So that, the square footage does not match with the picture. The square footage says 2,500, but 
and, and that is also in the first whereas paragraph in the resolution. So you keep promulgating 2,500 square foot, 2,500 square foot, when in fact, if you look at the drawing and you see the lines and you measure the lines against each other, it almost looks like this building is two perfect squares. Again, I'm sure we'll be able to talk more detail well after his presentation. This is well. What, I, what I'm just saying is, okay. The, what I'm just saying is that the <coughs> resolution is incorrect. The, the very first whereas in the resolution is saying 2,500 square footage, and that is completely incorrect. It's more like 3,000, a little over 3,000. Okay. My other concern was that the two different architects who bid on the design site plan should have been given identical requirements from the district, but they were not. One bid included leaving the office trailer as it is, and the other one, the other bid did not have that. So it appears that both bids were for the entire project from start to finish, but not including construction and landscaping and other costs. The bids were divided into sections, and I have no idea how the bidder was chosen, but I would have thought because it appears that it's the entire project, you would have followed California law for the public works project. So these are just a couple little concerns. So I, want, I would like you to postpone your actual decision for a month so that you can look more thoroughly. I know you've had some time and hopefully you've read through the 80 pages. I haven't. It's maybe 45. But there are inaccuracies in the mitigated ne negative declaration. And if you waited a month, it'd give you time to visit the site and kind of, you know, stand in, in front of it. <coughs> no, and, and actually look at what we are talking about. So, I want you to visualize the facility with its 15 foot height, 100 foot, 150 foot length, and the central, central Iowa building's 40 foot width. The building does, people keep saying it doesn't extend over the current driveway, but it does. It extends over the driveway, so it blocks the view down the Panhandle's multi-purpose trail. And it might be okay for a lot of you guys not to worry about that, or maybe you don't walk the Panhandle every day like I, well, I walk it five times a week. But not being able to see all the way down in front of me is going to make me fearful because one of my dogs has been attacked three times by off-leash dogs in the Panhandle. I'm not going to be able to see down the panhandle to see who's coming at me from the panhandle because the building is going to be blocking the view all the way down. And who knows if there's bicyclists coming or some suspicious characters, I don't want to say. That's one uh, thing for you guys to just think about. Then picture the new driveway. If it does in fact run along the entire front of the facility, it'll be in the old storage shed shop footprint. So that's where the driveway would be running along. And the setback from Miller Creek, especially at the east end, might not be large enough to have a driveway and a trail. So the only thing, um, the trail's envisioned at the top of the creek bank. And as we've seen many times before, Many trails are made to enable people to go down into Miller Creek along with the sediment and soil erosion. And this is going to happen again if we have the, the, if there is room for a path and if we do have it right at the top edge of the creek bank. I only have two more paragraphs. Um, so I was just going to suggest that we, I don't know if there's room, I don't think there's room I, to move things back closer to the facility. I just think maybe we need to have um, the facility further west of the proposal. And the other thing is, for visiting the new facility's proposed site, please note, I don't know if you any, any of you guys have noted the swampy area that I was talking about last month. There is a swampy area that's 30 by 30, and it's on in sloping soil. And this is located at the eastern end of where the materials yard is. So there will be trucks going in and out, in and out, in and out of the materials yard through the swamp, through the swamp, through the swamp, and you're going to have a really big mess because it's mucky right now. This is summer, middle of the summertime, and no one has been able to explain why it's swampy in 100 degree weather. Okay. Um, the other thing is, 
opposite, opposite this uh, swampy area, there's a long white pipe. Do you guys know what this, this drain pipe is that sticks out of the bank? I asked about it a month ago. Linda, I'm sorry, you, um, you're going like really at length. I, I want to make sure that everybody gets the chance to speak. And um, some of the items you're bringing up have been answered in, and the information is in the packet. one topic left. Okay. So if you can make it super brief, that would be awesome, because then I want to make sure that whoever wants to speak does speak. Is anybody else going to talk? Okay, the only other thing I want to make sure that is discussed is you cut down all those trees along the fence, along the neighbors, in the neighbor's yards, outside the neighbor's yards, all along the fence for 150, 200 feet, and those two neighbors directly behind the facility immediately are going to drop two, three hundred thousand dollars in property values. You're going to damage their trees, you're going to remove their beautiful scenery. This greenery that they have now is going to be gone. Thank you, Linda. You're I welcome. Think everybody heard your points. Um, anybody else? I just have a question. When she was talking about not being able to see down the panhandler, is a fire truck going to be able to get through there if there's like a fire down the road? Like Yeah, we'll be able to get there. Okay, I just wanted to hope that that was part of something that we could make sure could happen. With all these fires, you know. Yeah. Would anybody else like to comment? All right, if not, then I'm going to close the public. Hey, just to make one comment. <laughs> um, so one thing that I noticed, and I appreciate you guys publishing all the comments and the emails from everybody, I think that was helpful to see. You know, a lot of people are very supportive of the shed and a, and a solution, which I was glad to hear as, as a new member of the community. The one thing that I've, I found interesting is, is among those that hesitated to support the entire part of the project was the, the size of the lot. And I guess my curiosity is, is, while I've only been in the neighborhood for two to three weeks, the people seem very amenable to just a smaller facility that still maintains the needs of the of, of the folks who work in the park. And I just want to understand, maybe from the board, because I assume the board represents the community, is like, in terms of architectural designs, I understand that we're anchored to this one design right now. We're not in the design approval process. But from an approval perspective, if we get, that's why I brought the, the maintenance folks um, point earlier is is if they say that they need half the space versus a nice to have versus a need to have I would just love to hear because the sense that I get is if we reduce the overall footprint this would just fly through in terms of the overall approval this document is entitled park maintenance facility replacement initiative facility needs assessment and considerations mm -hmm. it's one of the documents that you can find on online on, in the section of our website that's dedicated to this project. And uh, yeah, I've read it. there has been numerous conversations with the maintenance employees, parking employees, about their needs. And once that needs was uh, assessed, we tried to shrink the, uh, the space because we anticipated that you know, not everybody would like, what's the code of their building that everybody keeps referring to wind cup. wind cup right we don't want another wind cup so it's very much a consideration of the board got it so, so again and again this okay. will be the design part um, and we're still in the sequel part or the um uh, like that like that like, yes. so we shouldn't be concerned about the footprint right now it's because that would be applicable well let's design. let's talk about it in the next item okay, okay. so for now again we'll Close the public comment, and now uh, we'll go back to the board for us to move forward in the process. I would need a motion from one of the board members. I'll make a motion that we um, approve the negative declaration um, as presented, and with the mitigation items that have also been presented to support it. Okay, so we have. Um, motion and a second. Um, any discussion from the board? Or would you like to start us off? And then we'll go down I don't down. have any. I think we've discussed this. Ad nauseum. Ad nauseum. Well, it's, thoroughly. Yeah. It seems like uh, uh, coupled with uh, what's it, 100 pages?
uh, 180 pages of this that actually all the board members did study, I can assure you of that, numerous times. Um, I'm pretty good. Jeff, would you like? Yeah, I, um, I think despite you know, indications of past malfeasance or whatever you want to call it, um, I think that this board and um, the staff in this district has been doing its due diligence to follow the correct and lawful process in order to get this done <clears throat> without any subterfuge, without hiding anything. Um, this has been a very transparent process. Um, certainly, there are um, there are some variables that I'm sure we will continue to look at, to modify, and to hopefully make sure that everyone can live with what the outcome is going to be. But I'm convinced that we um, we are ready to move forward, and that there we need to we need to do this since we've been on this task for two years now, almost two years, and this is where we are. We're going to be coming up on a rainy season again pretty quickly. Um, we're going to have the same issue that we had last winter. Um, we have safety issues for our employees uh, where this building floods. And um, I don't think we are in a position where they can go up on the roof to put a tarp on it this year. Um, so I want to move forward with this as quickly as possible. I want to continue to listen to the public. This does not mean we're stopping listening. And we will work to make something that everyone's proud of and addresses many of the concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. I'll just add my two cents. Um, I, being on the Track and Rec Commission before getting on the board, um, that's when the shed really started being uh, a top priority of mine. And um, we, we want to treat all our employees with respect they're due. And the conditions that they are in right now are just so disrespectful. Nobody deserves that. And I am glad that we all agree that it needs to happen, and it needs to happen fast. Um, I think also everybody will agree that um, combining the space into one and hiding as much of the not so elegant equipment or materials would benefit the community. Um, I also um, value professionals and value professional opinions, be it the cultural resource person, cultural study person, or the environmental study person. They know more about this than I do, and I can possibly Google in a week or two. Um, I also value um, the education and, and experience of professional architects who have gone through construction um, Millions of times more than I have, and therefore I will always listen more carefully and with open mind to a professional opinion um, rather than a personal opinion of somebody who is not as educated. Um, I would also at this point like to um, thank Eric for his dedication to this project. It has been countless hours. Um, he has made sure that the district follows the law. He uh, consulted with all the professionals that he needed to consult with. And um, I am feeling very good about submitting this to the county and have the county make the decision. Because if they feel that you know the setback is not sufficient, then we'll, we'll move forward given their decision. But I think um, this law is such that um, it constructs our freedom of movement, so to speak, and um, we'll see what happens once the county has their say. So at this point, I would like to uh, call for a vote. All in favor, um, say aye. 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 The motion carries. I abstain. Oh, sorry. I abstain. I didn't. Okay, Eric abstains. Three to one. Zero. And that means that the motion passes, correct? Correct. That's correct. <laughs> um, having discussed the environmental aspect of the project, let's move on to item E2.
um, at which point we'll um, hear a presentation of current proposed facility design and site plan for park maintenance facility replacement project. And um, we'll hear from Bill Handel, who is the architect on the project. Eric, do you want to introduce it? Anyway. I feel like you just did. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and to that point, I mean, again, I you know I think Bill has done a great job in working with me on this. All the project over the course of several years, but most recently over the course of uh, several months, um, has really kind of come to what it is at this point now, uh, and I think he is much better at explaining. Uh, thoughts behind design at this moment than probably where I am because it's what he does. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you just give me one second. I know if I try to talk while I'm doing this, it's not going to work. Bill, where are you going to stand? I'm going to sit. Oh, okay. Good. Mm. Good. 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 It's a slow reveal. chance to continue that discussion that was started and work off of um, the information that's some of the more information that's been added over the last uh, few months. I wanted to, uh, just a little intro to this, um, in, so you know, so it's clear my background, I've been uh, in professional practice for about 30 years, um, and uh, my practice has included all sorts of different kinds of building residences. Uh, non-residential work, commercial work, institutional work, um, car-related, auto dealerships, facility uh, use um, offices, all sorts of things. And, um, and I've done that be intentionally to, to apply the, the, uh, uh, the notions of design that I was taught to various um, circumstances. And, and it seems to me over all this time that, that we go through a very similar process each time in design. And I'm going to talk about this. Um, in, in that sense of trying to bring you uh, in as clients um, uh, into that design process because normal with a, a typical job, we don't have the formality of the board um, process. I have been able to work with, with uh, the staff uh, and so that has been a little bit more of a flow of a conversation but our conversation um, here is, is a little bit um, stilted in that design sense. And it's important to me because uh, you know, the architect is a facilitator of the uh, the elements of what the what the uh, client is really looking to achieve on many levels. It, it's not just uh, um, the aesthetics of the job; it's the cost of the job, it's the timetable of the job, it's the lifespan of the job. It's a it's a complex um, puzzle that you put together as you're going through the process to make decisions um, to try to determine the you know the best way to proceed. And you. That's complicated enough as it is, and then you include into that um, the entitlement process. Of course, in a typical project, uh, you would you would still have to go through you know planning of some degree or other, and um, so the process is iterative. It, it uh, you start somewhere and you make you come up with different iterations. You you sort of look at a pyramid of, of ideas. Um, so for me, coming into that, uh, I'm, I'm looking at that process with you, uh, but we need to start somewhere, and, and this, is, this is the place that we've kind of got a, a little bit of a foothold in at the moment. And uh, I was introduced to the project at the point um, post um, discussions of and development of the program, the, uh, the, the needs assessment. Um, I did, obviously, review and look back and discuss um, uh, with Eric uh, and the staff um, some of those that, those previous documents. So for example, the, the four different um, site options, and I won't obviously drag us back through that, but um, as I'm moving forward, I'm still keeping in mind the conversation that happened and the decisions that, were hap that happened before me and trying to make 
you know, the best uh, recommendations you know, based on those previous decisions. So that would include the site options and the characteristics of the site. Um, living here, of course, I, I, I know it pretty well. And uh, the program, the pieces, um, the staff input, which has been uh, very important. Um, as I said, I, I looked at the needs assessment, uh, took that into consideration, but really have had a number of conversations with, with the staff. And you know, frankly, they're, as you know, they're very unhappy with, with what they've had to deal with for, for many years and um, are, have been extremely frustrated with the pace of this, uh, this, this uh, lack of change for them. Um, they also had very specific things. It wasn't just a, sort of a, you know, an emotional or a, 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 you know, generalization, but there was, in the, around the times of the needs assessment, there were uh, square footage proposals that they had, had asked for in terms of uh, interior space use. And so I had looked at those, and frankly, what we have here is substantially less than what they said they needed, but um, in discussions with management, we you know, were proposing something that we thought was, uh, was still uh, usable, but you know, also in you know, it seems as if our internal discussions have been centered around the fact that uh, we're, we're kind of getting down to the minimal uh, usable area. Um, so, um, and then of course you have the constraints. Uh, whether the constraints be the site given constraints, which here are are pretty extreme in terms of the you know, environmental impact, the existing you know conditions of uh, the squeeze down of the park, um, the the multiple users, uh, not just the staff, but also the, the, uh, you know, the public. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at all those things and looking forward to moving through this process with you in terms of saying uh, which of these considerations that have already been uh, you know, taken into consideration to affect this design as it stands need to be altered or changed or maybe other priorities uh, come, come to the fore. So, um, I'm going to walk through the, the presentation um, and keeping in mind that, that sense of we're, we're now in a stage where we're going through these iterations of design. As an architect, I'm happy to go whichever you know, multiple of directions as, as you as clients uh, and your constituents want, want to, uh, you know, to take a look at. Obviously, there's a consideration of cost and time for those things. And that's why we, we don't do uh, for things like um, a negative declaration or an environmental impact report, it doesn't make sense to go and do a full set of complete drawings with all the civil engineering and everything else done because then you've locked yourself in. So you, know, you want to keep a, 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 a continual kind of flexibility, at least in, in to degree with the design. Um, so I have a series of, of pages here, about nine pages to, to show you that are um, <coughs> developments from the previous set of drawings that, that you had seen. But really, before I do that, I want to walk through uh, a 3D model um, because it really gives a much better sense of uh, the ability to visualize this um, scheme. So let me skip over programs. It's going to be a little bit of a light here in terms of you know, rendering some development. Um, so 3D models. Uh, for architectural design at this point, you know, we can go through and do very photorealistic renderings. The renderings that you previously saw were done based upon this model in this particular program, but then they were developed uh, and, and refined. This model that you're looking at is, is more of sort of the, the backbone model of uh, those renderings. And in developing it for this meeting, um, I built in certain things that were not there for the park and recreation meeting. Um, but it's also a cost-benefit analysis, a little bit of, about how specifically we want to get before we actually know what we're going to build. And at a certain point, we don't really want to do more of this than we need to. But I hope that the presentation gives you an idea. Um, I'll be able to, I have a, a bunch of preset views, but obviously this is the uh, existing conditions of the vicinity. Um, and some of the things that have been modeled here, obviously the, the the trailer and the existing shed building um, are accurately shown. There is an abstraction here, which is the storage bins for materials, as well as a boundary that is roughly trying to sort of say what is used for car storage. Um, frankly, 
normally that gets extended. You can see tire tracks all around here because normally the trucks are, are parked outside of that. Sometimes this is all filled up. But we had to have something to, to, to use as, as, a, uh, as a benchmark. So the square footage calculations that you'll eventually uh, we'll get to review again um, come from that come from that inclusion of some X amount of square footage space outside. Um, the yards, of course, you know, are indicated there. So the proposal obviously is to remove those buildings. You'll also see that two trees were removed. There's the one that's right next to the building and one that's, that's uh, approximately over here. Um, since the last month, first of all, the model that was previously seen by Parks and Rec did include a lot of the, you know, the trees. These are, some of them are very specific locations, such as these. These are generalizations, obviously. So, um, but there were trees that were added in the last uh, round after I had walked the site again, took photographs, took some measurements, um, and, and filled that up. Also, the, the, uh, the fence height we'll see, or the fence has been put in, and, and, the, and the relative heights have been put in. So, there's the proposed demo condition. Um, and in terms of talking about the components of this building and what kind of decisions that you make when you, what, you, what, take, what can you control and what is just going to be a given no matter what the design looks like. Um, obviously, the footprint of the building, footprint of the slab, is, is a base point. Um, and the proposal, you know, thus far has been based. I don't go over the square footage separately. I don't want to get tied up on it. But the proposal has been that there is a concrete slab, half of which is for a workshop space, um, and half of it uh, that's enclosed and heated and you know uh, sprinkler on the interior, and uh, that the other half of it on the on the west side, that this half is also enclosed by the roof, but it's open air. So from eight feet, from a fence height of eight feet uh, to the roof, that's open, but it does have some security measures. And then the additional uh, spaces at the ends are enclosed courtyards, uh, fenced in areas. And it's the total square footage of all of that that is slightly less, uh, you know, give me your discussions about your opinion about how much the uh, uh, the open area is currently used for, for storage, but the, the new that the proposal is that this new area is essentially equivalent to the area that's used both under cover, behind fences, and also in the in the open um, space. Um, the size of the staff's preference was to enclose this entire uh, area with with workshop and garage. Um, one thing I'll note as we move forward is that. In terms of cost, one of the important you know, components of you know, your considerations um, is that in conditioned interior space is more expensive to, to build out than, than unconditioned space. Um, but you also have an economy of scale, so at a certain point, if you build a, a slab, paper slab that's half this size of this slab, you're not necessarily going to pay for half, uh, get, uh, half the price to get that slab. There's going to be a, you know, a built-in level of efficiency that as you expand, you're you're not uh, you know you're going to be gaining a little bit more. So there's a balance between for this building, no matter what the program is, no matter how big you want it at the end of the day, that you have to think about in terms of um, economy of scale and building, and not underbuilding something only to have to add on to it later, which is going to be much more expensive relatively. I'll also say when you look at these components, and the next one being uh, next one being the, the columns or this, you know, the main structure of the roof that um, it doesn't matter what the building looks like for, for these things. I mean, the cost of that concrete slab, no matter what you put on it, is going to be relatively the same, same cost. The structural uh, decisions that come about um, are based upon the fact that when you're dealing with usable space for workshop and for being able to move some vehicles around as need be, you want to obviously have as few columns as possible in the way. Fewer columns gives you more flexibility, better use of the space, but it also increases the span of the roof structure, which then increases the cost. So, um, you know, in moving forward, it's trying to, uh, as, as the architect, propose something that is a balance between the flexibility um, versus possibly something that's cheaper but not as usable because it's got more vertical structure. Another element that's going to be in the design that's to some degree or another is going to be some type of uh, bracing, diagonal bracing for seismic resistance. 
Um, there's various ways to do that uh, uh, with walls or with, or with angle braces or with more expensive connections on vertical columns. But in this case, the proposal was to use, go ahead and use vertical, I'm sorry, uh, seismic braces in a way that aesthetically could be interesting and also might even be a little bit rem reminiscent of the Kachkas of the, uh, uh, you know, the, of that Miwok kind of tilted, lean to kind of structure. So there's a little bit of a notion of that. Um, the next component uh, are the walls. And in this case, the workshop is defined here. Uh, the eight foot height is, is right along here. So this space is enclosed, condition heated. You have a uh, workshop, storage closet, bathroom, um, office slash break room slash kitchenette, um, and more secure tool storage area. All of this is, as I said, you'll see roof uh, covered, um, but it's non-conditioned space, so slightly more affordable. And yet, you're getting some economy of scale by the extension of uh, the slab and also the extension of the roof uh, in the same sense. <clears throat> Next component, small component, but an important component of the doors. Uh, obviously, a few interior doors, some exterior man doors, uh, person doors, uh, and then roll-up doors for, for access. Um, roll-up doors can be extraordinarily uh, expensive, relatively speaking, so there's, even when we eventually get to the, to the uh, smaller decisions, there's going to be factors that affect lifespan and quality and, uh, you know, versus cost. Um, but I point them out because, again, it doesn't matter what the roof of this thing looks like or at a certain point what the, uh, what the finishes on the, on the interior or the exterior, you'd still have X number of, of you know, roll-up doors. Um, next component is the glazing. In this uh, case, the idea of this building, uh, I felt from reading the program and knowing you know, the, the use and some experience in the past with similar types of structures, is um, you want to provide security, you want to provide, you don't need to provide views, um, but you also want to provide daylighting because it can cut down on the efficiency uh, of you know, not needing as, as much um, artificial lighting as well as uh, it, it makes for a better environment and a safer environment for, for employees to do work. So um, uh, to a degree, a little bit of the decision about how to bring light, natural light into this building has affected the roof decision and just to pitch the roof up to the, uh, to the south in order to create this series of clear story windows that, that wrap around uh, this side. Everything else is solid. Currently in the existing trailer, there's a couple of windows in the back um, and we have two small windows, one right here for the bathroom and one for the break room. The storage doesn't require one and we don't really need anything else. Uh, then the roof structure, um, very similar to what you'd see, say, at the pool building, um, which, by the way, was built in 1998. I was just reminded. So, so it has been just about 20 years since we last the district did the project. Um, and a uh, building, frankly, of almost the exact same size as the, the building that you're, you're looking at right here. Um, but the, uh, these, are, these are referred to as blue band beams. They're, they're a, a standard uh, type of beam that allows for longer spans, stronger, longer spans. Um, but they can also be exposed. Uh, they don't need to be you know, finished in any kind of special way. Um, the building will probably have some bit of steel in terms of connections, but mostly I was proposing a, a wooden building here for, um, for cost reasons and also for the, the park setting and consistency with our other buildings, uh, such as the, what is the pool building. And then the roof structure, in this, case, in this iteration, it's a, it's a flat roof. As I said, it has to do with wanting to lift the roof uh, to be able to gain the uh, the sun from the southern exposure, but it also has some extensions here. Um, there's, I think there's some confusion on the square footage of the building because at certain points with the roof plan, I'm indicating that the uh, area of under roof, which is not exactly an area of walls and interior space. So you can see that the roof extends out to create some shading and reduce some heat gain um, on the interior and it extends at both, both ends. Uh, a few feet as well, probably about three feet there with the check of dimension. Um, just to bring, bring some light into the, the, the middle of the building, there is um, a proposal for some skylights here, which could be of any size or sort or you know, deleted, but uh, it's in my experience, it's nice 
again, to cry uh, and even lighting, especially when there's workshop tool um, work you know, going on. Um, th and then along the front, uh, there's a proposal to, uh, to include these vertical uh, shades. These are called briselet. Um, briselet are just um, exterior shades to cut down on, again, the direct sunlight. In, in this case, those briselet, which is what their function would be in front of the windows, would extend across um, the face of the building here uh, and around the side. So here they, even though the eight foot level of the walls is already um, given up today with the new sturdy walls, better than what's supplied by the fence that's falling down. That's, I think, a little, little bit lower than eight feet. Um, but in any case, just to provide a little bit of extra security there, the breeze away are continued across and around to the side. You know, the last component are the courtyards uh, to contain building materials, allow for overnight parking, basically to bring, to wrap everything into the fold of uh, security for, for the building. Um, the proposal is to have an eight foot fence, high fence that, that goes across around uh, you know, on both sides, um, and on this side, on the, on the southern face, it has a little bit of a concrete stem wall here that's provided just for some extra uh, uh, convenience, and, and this is, frankly, it's a little bit more of a, a, a little bit of a design element uh, of a, a kind of a bench um, along there. Uh, but it also will help to keep a sturdier foundation for, for the fence of this side. In terms of you know the building impacting, uh, if we look back at that first, oops, sorry, <laughs> uh, one thing I'll note about the impact on the site is that currently the uh, trailer, which you saw sits right here, there's a retaining wall of um, uh, railroad ties that are. So the grade changes. It's flat here, and then it goes up about two and a half feet or so, and, it'll, and then it even slopes up a little bit more. There are these existing trees that are along here. There's, these are some young oaks. These are some more mature oaks. Um, because the retaining wall is all, has been in place for a long time, and the roots of these trees have already been sort of dealing with and accommodating that, I believe that the slab could be poured without any impact on on all of that because it's up two and a half feet higher and it's uh, it's far enough away that it doesn't you know really affect the slab. Um, in and these trees are in the area of the uh, of the fence, but the fence doesn't have doesn't need to have a continuous footing. Here you have a continuous footing along the front um, for stability of that fence, but on the back you could have posts. Uh, supports for vertical posts to hold the fence together. So again, as a design sense, just in terms of the sensitivity of those those trees, I've worked with arborists before on other projects where we you know if it gets that far to start to say this is exactly where this fence is going to go. You have the arborists come in, you mark off places, you protect the tree during construction, you see where you can you dig, you follow certain procedures uh, for not not uh, harming those trees. Um, Just rotate with this from the from the southwest uh, side, and then I'm going to come down to the level of the path. Um, I think the you know the big advantage here in terms of this location, uh, uh, in terms of this as an option for a location, obviously is that we've pulled further away. If we've uh, gotten rid of this problem of being so close to proximity of the creek for environmental reasons, but really it opens up all of this area for, you know, for use and restoration back to the way that it is. The, what's interesting to me about the, the, I mean, I'm an architect, I deal with buildings. I work with landscape architects who deal with all of the softscape and to a degree of hardscaping around the building. So in this model, <coughs> what's represented here and what's actually on the site, you'll see, are gravel areas that have a billion needles that have fallen onto them so that in certain places you can't see where there's path, where there's not, when gravel's put down, when it's not. So um, it's not in my scope of work to, uh, to say specifically here should be you know, the exact edge of a gravel path. Um, that would be something that once you go past this point that you start to develop a landscape plan uh, for. <coughs> Same thing with the, you know, any any of the groundwork that would be done around here in terms of restoration, different 
different job uh, expertise. Um, but the intention, obviously, is that as you're coming in from this from this angle, from, uh, from the part that you're able to now utilize and appreciate, just like you do in the in the rest of the, the walkway, all of the land that's here and actually looking at the park, and not be walking right in between um, all the work that the guys are doing and looking into the to the shop. This shop. There's only two ways that you can actually even see into it, um, this, this end and, and the other end. So I think visually and security-wise, uh, you've, you've kind of limited both the, you know, the access for potential theft or, or, uh, or abuse as well as uh, safety. And um, by not having any openings along this side, you don't have any vehicle traffic that has to come in or out at a 90-degree angle, basically intersecting uh, pedestrians. Uh, dog walkers or anyone or kids playing as, as they walk around this thing. So at some point in this in this uh, site, you have to back in and out of, of uh, the building uh, or pull into the building. But uh, you know the, the given has been that in my mind it's been that you want to reduce those points of entry and the angle so that you don't have uh, 90 degree um, uh, you know, blocked sight lines. This is going to take us down to the, <clears throat> the east view. Um, you can actually see some of the end of the, the little low um, barrier that's at the end of the path. So the, the uh, horseshoe pits are right, right down here. Um, and then I'm going to walk you through to the courtyard. So this is the, the west, I'm sorry, the east court. A um, little caveat here that as I move around here, sometimes I'm going to block, I'm going to walk into a wall and it'll really throw me off. But, you know, it's the, the eastern side is a, a small, it's a vision um, from talking to the employees uh, to be a small material courtyard, um, but, uh, you know, it could be excess storage or projects from the shop, anything that can, can live outside that doesn't need the roof covering, um, but it does give them some ability to store in there. Also, some of the smaller vehicles could be on you know, could be accessed on this side without a problem. Um, I've tried to, I've gone at lengths to try to describe the interior of this as a workshop. Uh, what you're seeing here are the doors fully opened up. It's not intended that the, uh, that the employees or are, are needing to or really the want to drive through this on any kind of daily basis. What I'm assuming is that the shop will be full with, with projects and then access will be through the western court into this uh, roofed area over here, or access from this way. Doesn't hurt to have the ability to drive through, so um, that is what is shown there. Then we're going to move into the workshop itself. Um, and, you know, not to get into a degree of, uh, of excess study, but you can, you know, the advantage of these models is that you can really start to look at days of the, of the year, at times of the day. You really want to get specific about how you know the light is working, um, but it's the strength of this type using this type of tool. Um, I will say that uh, oh, very important thing I forgot to mention since we last were looking at drawings is that this, uh, based upon the comments um, previously uh, from the public about uh, and and the neighbors about the height of the building and discussion with staff and looking a little bit more specifically at a section cut, so that'd be a horizontal cut through this building as if you took a bus saw right through it. Um, the, the whole roof has been lowered so that the uh, far side, the roof edge on the uh, north side is at 10 feet and the pitch at the top on this side is at 14. Um, I, think, I believe that that still allows enough room, uh, when I say the 14 feet, that's going to the very peak, three feet out from this exterior wall. So. If you're, you know, you have to consider what's the clear height, usable height. It's really, it's not, you know, that point out there. It's really the, uh, uh, where, you know, the beam and the structural leads. As I mentioned, fewer columns, deeper beams, um, more, you know, more expense, and vice versa. But at a certain point, this still allows, uh, I think, about 10, close to 10 feet um, on, on, on this end. And given the uh, tractor and uh, there's a large cab on that, um, which is close to, I think, 9.6, that, uh, that this reduced height would both address maybe some of the concerns that were previously mentioned, um, but, also, uh, but also still allow the staff to get in and out of the, of the space.
you know, move through to the to the parking storage again, multi-purpose use. But the thought was, we're building this roof halfway across this building. Uh, we're giving the staff half of interior space, condition space that they really wanted. Uh, you know, is there not a cost efficiency with just extending that roof out over this area? So at least if they do have projects that are of a shorter nature that don't need to be living in the workshop for, for a long time, but uh, you know, could be done out here where it is nice in the winter to be able to you know, work undercover, um, that this area could be used for it, rather than it just being more open yard space, but also allows uh, for the evenings for, for the vehicles to be pulled in. Um, you know, the, the vehicle use, as I've seen the pattern uh, over time, it's been that the vehicle will store overnight and, and assume during the day they're, they're out. It's not like we need permanent parking spaces. Uh, so these areas, in terms of trying to create, insist on a certain amount of efficiency, um, <clears throat> a space like this, which might be parking at night, becomes workable, uh, usable area during the day for small, small projects. It's been my experience in, you know, designing uh, projects for so long that um, you take into consideration the program and the use patterns and you build something and next thing you know they're using it in completely different ways. Um, as well as the fact that no matter what you build, it'll be completely filled up and they'll need more space within a couple of weeks. Um, so I take, I take planning both seriously and also with like a grain of salt because I think improvisation with a space is really just, it always happens. So here's just looking back at that. At that door. And then this is going to back up to the courtyards on the west side. And this backs up all the way. Now, it's, uh, just a quick note before I go to the other drawings. This is showing this view from the sidewalk. I just want to point out when you're standing at the sidewalk, when you're walking towards this, all you're seeing in the midst of the existing. Building. All you see is the existing building. Um, you don't actually see anything in terms of a, of, a, of a view through until you get all the way down here and you're essentially in the midst of uh, you know, the employees working and the doors being open and everything else. So um, um, I just want to be when we're when we're looking at and you know notions of like I walk through this area currently and I'm seen through it. I agree that happens at certain places, but it doesn't. It doesn't actually happen here. You know, it, it doesn't really even happen until you get down here. At a certain point, the whole path bends. So there's obviously some some uh, you know alterations in the expectations of this because now the the path would would come around the building this way. I would think that that would be a benefit in terms of nature um, and an appreciation, just like it is in all the rest of the, the pathway. Also, a benefit in not having trucks. And, uh, and employees crossing and using this area constantly as your traffic is going you know, across. It. So that's the the drive to want to look at a building which really directs the traffic around it and really limits the employees, you know, access here and when they need to come down and go around. We did go down um, yesterday just to make sure of the turnarounds. Um, there, there is a way to come in and out of this and turn around the F-250. There is a way to come directly out of here. We have the F-250 right here last night. Once this building is gone, it's not a problem to make that, that radius turn. And I'll, I'll, I'll speak to that from the sense of a lot of experience because I've, I've worked on a lot of uh, uh, auto dealerships and, and car facilities where uh, we had extensive uh, variations in, uh, in turning radiuses for, for cars that were, uh, you know, at, at least as equivalent to the to the uh, F-250 in terms of also delivery vehicles. And um, what I found in all those years of, of doing that is that, that you can uh, do two things. You can draw the actual radius uh, to show that that turn works, but also in, rea in reality, you never do, very rarely do, a, uh, you know, a single radius turn uh, where you don't do a, a multi-turn, and that's the chief in, you know, test in terms of their driving skills in the fire department, that's you know pretty pretty common. So um, so I'm I'm just gonna say I'm personally confident that that uh, the use of this space in terms of vehicles can be limited to uh, to this to this area. Again keeping the uh, um, keeping the horseshoe 
courts as, as they are. Um, some modifications to the landscape, but I assume that that's part of the eventual landscape design. <laughs> and, uh, and as well, still have access here and here, and also still allow um, you know, fire access, emergency access you know, around this building. Um, so that is the, that's the extent of that model. And if I'm okay on time, I'd like to quickly go through the, the other drawings. So the, the drawings that previously had been published, and um, I tried to uh, augment a little bit with some, some more information. Um, the numbers in terms of square footages are identical. Oh, I'm sorry, the, the other thing that um, was done here is that these drawings, uh, Eric asked that I reformat everything to 8.5 by 11 for future use so it could be distributed more easily. Previously, everything was at regular architectural size sheets, and as they were distributed to you, you were small, they were microscopic little tiny prints. Everything now has been reformatted, so you should be able to read it, or anybody can you know, access it at, uh, at letter size. Um, and uh, so here we have those, you know, again, existing conditions with the maybe the open discussion about that open storage area. Um, <coughs> <clears throat> this is the, uh, the, the new plan. Um, I have added uh, some dimensions here. I will note that the discussions about square footage, again, there's, that's a roof dimension, and you can see that this dashed line is the building interior as opposed to the roof extension over top of it. The existing uh, trailer, just for reference, if you're standing out there, the back of this building would be the back of the uh, existing trailer, so that doesn't change. And that trailer essentially spans can see relative to the property line between the two uh, where the end of the trailer is and uh, well this overlay shows you both at the same time so um, this is just to give you a sense of comparing the red as existing to the square footage to the blue and the, the light blue there uh, of the courts being fairly equivalent and uh, like I said a little bit less for the new um, and it shows the trees that will be would be removed this one uh, and, and this one in the court. Uh, none of the oaks would be proposed to be affected at all. Um, and uh, this starts to show some of the main trees on some of the uh, properties. 575 uh, has one large tree and has a shorter fence. Uh, 565 has a number of smaller trees uh, and a slightly higher, uh, higher fence. This is a Again, in order to fit in uh, on a letter-sized paper, this cuts off the courtyard dimensions, but you can see the dimensions of the building, um, the 20, uh, sorry, 38 and 35. If you, as I said, if you look at this length and about this width, it's pretty much what the pool building is, um, if you want a sense of scale right on this side currently. and. Uh, just notated to show that, that this is all concrete slab area, the green and the blue, um, and your covered roof area versus your workshop. These are the skylights, uh, minimal bathrooms, and uh, uh, and break room area. I will say, uh, you know, a point about the roof in the same sense that we don't we you know, we we work through the schematic design with architectural. An architect, we don't go and start having a structural engineer design the, you know, the details of the building. That would be something that would have to be uh, attended to, as well as uh, civil engineering and drainage for the roof. Uh, any um, this area of roof would would be directed either into storm drain or to it could be site water retainage for irrigation as well. So depending upon cost factors and uh, various things, it's uh, I, I think things like area of the roof and drainage of the roof and how site water is handled and uh, foundation relative to, uh, to tree uh, roots. All of those things are, are picked up at the next level of, of design, but nothing that I, that I see as unfamiliar or, um, or alarming. Um, <clears throat> these have been added since the last time, I think, um, or, which are just straight up elevations. Um, and let me see if I can show you that. I think, um, or which are just straight up elevations, um, 
And let me see if I can show you that. So we have a little bit for the dimensions. So, so you can see here, if you can read that, it's 14 feet is the absolute peak. The beam is assumed to be about 12 inches, might could you know possibly be a little bit, bit less than that. Um, this is looking from the very end, so you're actually seeing the fence uh, and then the building beyond another, uh, you know, the roof actually just another whatever, 20 feet beyond, and then the, the side here is way back all the way at the, uh, uh, at the workshop face. Um, down on this side you have the 10 feet uh, from, from the ground to the uh, low end of the pitch roof. The existing trailer is I think at like 10 foot 4, and that's right at this same point. You can see the change in the ground plane that again is existing. They can walk out and see the railroad ties there. And this is the area where the um, uh, trees are located. I even, uh, the neighbors were kind enough to, to let me go into the back to see their views uh, from behind. This is indicating, you know, roughly, abstractly, the tree that's uh, located there. Um, I did a, a sight line study from their uh, terrace in the, in the back, the patio in the back, uh, looking out to see um, how much of the roof they would actually see. So given the fact that their fence uh, is relatively lower here, um, and with some additional planting, you could, this is this dashed line, totally obscure the entire, uh, the entire roof. Um, that would be something that I'd recommend for further study as you know, this, if this moved forward. But the, uh, you know, what I want to point out is that this area behind 575 doesn't have um, really empty, any existing um, plantings at, at the moment. It's, it's uh, available to be developed <coughs> for planted uh, and landscaped by the district probably more efficiently for the location of this particular building. And then you can see the vertical wood siding, uh, the glazing, which is the workshop, which is in this, this portion of the structure, and, um, and then the open area behind the Rieselet there, and the eight-foot fence and a two-foot uh, concrete stem wall. Um, another drawing that's been added is, is, is this one, which is a section, a cross-section. Uh, looking east, so we're, we're cutting through the actual uh, workshop building, I believe, yeah, on this upper one, and <coughs> excuse me, on the lower one transversely, uh, or sort of longitudinally, all the way across through the doors. Um, the, when you cut in the long direction and you're going through a pitch roof, it's obviously not showing the high point of the roof because that's behind where the, where the cut is happening. Um, And I took a few dimensions here in terms of headroom, uh, 11 foot 3 and a half inches here on the high side, uh, 10 foot 5, actually that's the top, so it would be about 9 foot 6. Well, no, I'm just saying that it's a great room, we're almost there. I'm just going to go back. But it's the storage area beyond that, the uh, security storage area for tools, that would benefit from having as much um, as possible. Um, am I getting a brand of a car? No, I'm just <laughs> This uh, section, I took the uh, opportunity since I was cutting similar um, cuts through the building to the elevation. Um, to draw the relationship of the fence at uh, 565, which is slightly higher. It's got a 25% uh, uh, trellis up above here, but it comes up to about 7 foot 9, I think it's that. Um, there is a lot more foliage on that property, between that property and the, uh, and the building. There's, as I said, a number of small oaks. This is not an oak. I, I'm not sure what the species is. but. Um, uh, but there are also a number, of, I think there's about four different trees that are on that property. So the view is, is uh, already fairly obscured um, from, from that side. Um, then. These renderings are the pr previous perspectives. As I said, I, I, uh, we thought it did not make sense to update them in terms of the height change because everything else is kind of staying the same and, and, and frankly the general look at the moment um, 
uh, is is similar. So, but you would see obviously this this whole top part coming down. Everything from at the eight foot level stays the same. It's just that you get a lower roof, plus you get a, a smaller uh, one foot less of glazing, uh, essentially. And then the view from uh, the other end, the view from the east side. And then I had shown these um, previously just in some notions of, of material. Obviously, there are uh, references to kutchas. I, I'm not sure exactly how to say them. You want to, but um, uh, the courtyard fence, you know, just a proposal that it have some type of variation for visual interest, vertical wood siding. Um, I, I see something just like a whitewashed natural stain. Um, in terms of the brace columns, uh, you know, certainly not as grand in scope, but you know, you get the idea there. Resale, the, the little fins there, um, and then alternate ideas for how how that concrete stem wall would look, when, and maybe you would have some some uh, you know landscaping on, on top of that, depending upon uh, irrigation abilities and uh, and the input of a landscape designer, which we haven't had yet. So, so this is the the drawings that I. I've developed so far, as I said, I, I did talk to um, to Victor and Esteban and uh, Marco. Um, went over these, you know, with them to get their feedback, especially on the reduction in the roof, to make sure that wasn't going to be a problem. Um, had good feedback from them. I would think that, you know, from this point going forward, uh, as I said, the you know iterations on design, on design in terms of all of these components that I described, or, or whichever way the clients, the board want, want to go. Um, I, I have tried to think of it in terms of use uh, uh, of cost as well, projecting you know cost uh, efficiencies, trying to get the most efficient building, and also as I said, the lifespan of the building because it's often the case as I've had repeat clients over the years, we build something and ten years later they come back and change it and wish they would have done it at the prices of ten years before. So I'm not uh, invested on, on how big this building is. Uh, if it were half the size and that fit the needs and made economic sense uh, and kept the employees happy, it was, it's not a here or there for me. Um, but this is my, uh, at the moment, my best uh, uh, design ability based upon the feedback uh, and the program that I've, that I've had so far and projects into that efficiency. Thank uh, you so thank much, you. Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Um, what a beautiful visual. Can we ask um, you? Few questions, clarifying questions. One second. Okay. In terms of procedure, again, I'd like to start with the board be, to a, be able to ask technical questions of Bill first, and then we'll open to the public. And then um, we're not taking any action, so um, let's let's start with the board. There. Bill, from here, I couldn't read the dimensions, and I know Linda was mentioning. The building is about 76 feet long. Let me, uh, let me zoom in on that and then, well, you know what? The, the overall roof to roof is 86 minus, uh, I think, 3 feet on either side. So it's about 79 and, and, and change uh, um, under, under 80 feet. It's actual sort of wall-to-wall -wall area from the covered, covered uh, work storage area to the workshop. The actual workshop is only 30, on the interior it's only 35 <coughs> feet, little 35 foot 9 inches. Yeah, that was, that's where I was going. What's the interior wall-to-wall sideways? Right, so, uh, so this, <coughs> this workshop area here is 35 foot 9 inches from here to here. And uh, uh, t from the column, let's see, 12, 30, 36 minus about a foot. So it's about 35, probably 34 foot, say six from the interior here to the interior of this. So about 34 and a half by 35 and a half of actual condition space. And I showed that square footage uh, up here, 12, so 1,200 square feet total. Restroom, 55 square feet. Break room, 20. Storage, 175. Workshop, 20. So that's the 1,200, and then the covered storage area is is 1,300. And as I said, when we were when I was a, first approached with the needs assessment, what I was asked what the employees asked for was 2,500 square foot, just enclosed in the condition. Where I was going, I was interested in the width, because in what I'll call a classic garage type building, if the access was 90 degrees to the way you proposed it. 
and we have a truck that's, I think Stephen said, 22 feet long. And you had a little bit of room to either end of it. The building would be just about as wide as you've shown it there. The difference being, you get to back out all the way across the pedestrian path or whatever, right. to come in and out of the garage, uh, and then turn to go back to Miller Creek Road. I, I think that's, that, that was the concern. In, is take this exact same design as it is, and then just put a whole bunch of doors at the end of it here. You would have you know multiple exit points at a 90 degree angle from traffic, general traffic, line, line points coming in and out. How do you utilize all this area? I also think, uh, as I've been trying to emphasize, um, that's different than comments I've heard is that this is not a garage building. It's it's a this is all workshop building. Um, that there there does need to be a, a good portion of it, and which is what this is, where projects, uh, certain materials are stored to a degree, but also projects have to sit and last for, uh, and correctly, uh, you know, while they get worked on. This this area down at this end. Uh, and or you could, you know, or sorry, or you could come in this way or come in the way I've said, uh, is, is multi-purpose in terms of it also being, having protected work, workshop-ish area, but you can also come in and park things either straight in or you can pull them, you know, into these areas if, you do, if they do need to live there a little bit longer. Um, I see the other options uh, with the 90 degree uh, typical, if it's a garage, and if that's the program that I've been given, um, you know, you might approach it that way, but I think the disadvantage would be that, that this area would be less protected. And anything that's built down this end really gets a no problem in terms of the, the narrow width in, in that direction. Um, it would completely destroy the, the use of the, uh, the horseshoe area, and you'd have to take out more trees uh, along here. Anything else, sir? Okay, thank you. Um, I just, from my perspective, I just want to say, I, um, hearing the concerns of the residents in terms of the noise from the shop, I like to see that the, um, it's the break room and the restroom and the, um, uh, the purple thing. Yeah, yeah. storage. storage. Oh, storage. <laughs> storage. <laughs> um, that, that would provide a, a relative buffer for the residents from the workshop area, which is a plus. Second, um, I like the fact that there is space between the workshop or the building and the fence. And it seems like in, in terms of one address, one address, we already have foliage. So the second um, <coughs> residence, that's where we would have to add something potentially to further obstruct or, or hide the building. Um, so that's... Um, that's helpful. Third point, I really appreciated the um, schematic where you could see the line of sight um, for our residents because that is a valid point, you know, um, what am I going to see? So um, the, the obstruction truly is minimal, if, if, if anything at all. So that's, um, that's a positive. These are, kind of, I'm trying to combine um, the new information you presented with the feedback we have been uh, getting in the past meetings. Um, well, the, the, the roof lowering is a significant change in terms of that aspect. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I don't, you know, from a typical park user walking along a 15 foot high ridge versus a 14 high ridge, I don't really think there's that much of a, you know, of an impact that you could say. Um, if you want to, you know, defer to just like, well, anything smaller is better. Uh, Fine, great. Uh, windows are cheaper <laughs> by a foot, um, but I think uh, definitely you know in terms of the impact from uh, especially 575 because it's lower fence and it's a little bit of a more exposed area. That's that's true. Um, and if I can just mention respond to your comment about the, the noise, uh, you know the, the reality is that the garage doors are always open and they're facing the north. And the thing about sound and I actually have done a lot of acoustical work with some acoustical consultants is that um, uh, sound uh, is, is like light. If you, if you have a direct line of vision to it, you're going you're gonna to hear it. Um, it's got a, a, a fall off of proximity. Uh, um, uh, as you move away, it's, it's, it falls off significantly depending upon the, 
um, the harmonics and the, the particular um, frequency. But the one thing that I, I started out with is a notion in here, which I did talk about, but because it would really come down to cost and, and, and whether it's needed, would be that this wall, uh, I was, in my mind, I was thinking of it being either a straw bale structure or a concrete wall structure or a block structure, but essentially a sound wall. Um, you could achieve, uh, I've done this um, different ways in the past in projects. Uh, you need mass to really stop. Uh, first thing is to just have a, have a closed sealed building. In this case, we've already achieved that with having fewer doors that are not facing the houses. Um, so that's, that's, and it's new construction, so it's going to be better weather sealed than the non weather sealed building that we currently have. Um, but the, you know, the last uh, thing, or maybe an additional thing that would help, would be the density of, of this wall, plus the addition of uh, you know, other use areas. Um, padding that. So again, we are lowering the roof. The the line of sight is um, is now not a, not an issue really. Um, we will have foliage to provide more division between the fence and the building. Um, I'm also um, not a big fan of the uh, of accessing the building. Uh, from the creek side, just because uh, you know, pulling out of a parking lot when I don't see who is coming behind my car always terrifies me. And so this would be just begging for incidents uh, to uh, happening. Not not only with people, but also uh, pets. We do have uh, pets on a leash law. Uh, I would venture to say not everybody follows that. Um, and kids running, and uh, so basically, I, um, I love, from the safety point of view, I love the fact that uh, vehicles are not backing up towards the creek. Um, and just my final question, um, this, how numerically, how does the current square footage that our workers use compare to this project? Uh, well, I'll show you that. Um, I know you've these mentioned two this, sheets. Uh, so the total, <clears throat> total footprint, which I'm calling the, uh, uh, well, let me go back to the uh, existing. <coughs> so we've got a trailer that's 475 square feet. We've got a workshop shed, which is 1525. The storage yards, which are this one and here. So these numbers are, are definitive. Um, sorry. Uh, 1610. Um, and then, argumentatively, uh, the open storage area, I would call it at least that, because I know I've seen it more than used. But that's uh, that in that diagram, it's 935. That adds up to 4,545 uh, 4, square feet. Okay, so 4,500 square feet, right. roughly. The, uh, the proposal here is that the conditioned area, again, the workshop, half of this roof structure is 1,200 square feet. Um, the vehicles uh, storage area or the workshop area is another 1,300. It's slightly bigger than, than the, uh, the 1,200. So you have 2,500 square feet under roof, under uh, behind walls under roof, uh, with a little bit of extra square footage for the eaves. And then the open yards are uh, the west court is uh, 1,175 and the east court is 785. So totaling 4,460 specifically in this, so essentially 4,500. So the so current space is 4,500 square feet. The new proposed area would be 4,500 square but, feet. But I would say the current space not included in the current space, including area that you can visually see, including uh, all, of, all of this area. So all of it red is 4,500 square feet, but, but a good chunk of that, I mean that, out of that 4,500 square foot number, almost 1,000 square feet is, is just exposed and open. So the new proposes the same amount of square footage, but all completely okay. hidden. And I believe that the, uh, you know, storing all of the, you know, trucks, tractors, everything we've got currently could happen, because I, I've seen it happen in the existing red footprint, could happen in this footprint. All right, so we have we have roughly the same square footage. Look, would you please tell us how many vehicles the park staff has? <coughs> we currently have a uh, Ford truck, uh, dump truck, tractor, 
and um, two smaller utility vehicles, the Kawasaki and the John Deere, um, and then the, the lawnmower. Is the lawnmower is a ride on lawnmower. Correct. So that's six vehicles total? I think that was seven. Seven. In two years from now. Would that be the same? The dump truck would probably by then uh, instead be a dump trailer, a smaller uh, truck. Thank you. Um, gentlemen? Yeah, I will say uh, just you know, in terms of those vehicles and the, you know, the access, it's, it's a little, you know, what's tough right now is to envision um, the, how access is in a future proposed building as it's shown here because you've got a big you know, courtyard. In, in this area, but as we looked at it yesterday, if this were if this were demolished, you'd have a significant area at the east end to, to, to angle those uh, uh, vehicles. Thank you so much, Bill. Um, at this point, we'll close it for the board and open to the public. So, please. I've got one question. I know it's yeah. outside your scope, perhaps. But what is the substrate of those two open courtyards on the west? Well, uh, I would I would imagine that you you know make it a pervious uh, I would material. Make it pervious, yes. What's that? Yeah. yeah. So gravel gravel would be the chief thing, uh, and you know the problem with the gravel that's it's in the area now is because you have the the, uh, the evergreens. You've right. kind of constantly got these pine needles all over the place, um, and in this case, at least you know we'd be getting rid of uh, two of those, uh, which would help with the you know the roof, but. Um, but yeah, I would, I would I would start with gravel, and then I talk to a landscape architect and see you know drainage wise and everything else, and utility and cost and blah 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 what would work best. I think the employees would be fine with that. I think they'd appreciate having a concrete slab underneath this roof, while you could even cut the slab back and have that be gravel um, from a you know working standpoint for little Sorry, projects. Kind of, doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah. Um, the other question is, I thought that there was a number of trailers that they have as well as well as vehicles. Well, that's why I asked for the, the only uh, I mean, there's a couple attachments for the tractor, which I consider part of the tractor. Um, and there's one uh, tow behind um, water uh, watering trailer that's pretty small, and one tow behind aerator that um, is also that will take up much room. So, I don't so I'm wondering if that's that's also contemplated being inside. They would. They're currently housed in that. In the existing red, you know, uh, area that's that was listed on the, the current. So it's sort of out, outside. In within the storage areas. Right. Uh, this, yard. this in this area, this right outside, outside within, fuzzy within, area within sort of general footprint. Correct. Thank you. Right. John, you had. Yeah, I just wanted to comment, Bill. Uh, thank you for doing that uh, uh, presentation of this. I think that the uh, plans that you're showing us will not only benefit the community with improved safety and functionality, but also a massive aesthetic improvement to the community. And I'm really impressed. Well done. You know, I, I just to, can I just speak for a second? <laughs> I think that, uh, um, you know, obviously, as, as a public entity, the, the, the district has a mission to, to you know, be cost efficient and, uh, um, and it's easy for uh, local governments, especially log, small local governments, to you know, just default to a baseline, can't afford anything, it's just going to be the cheapest thing. And where I would counter that uh, needs to be questioned a little bit is in a few areas. One is lifespan. Uh, because you can certainly buy things that are cheap and then have and then be paying for them three times, you know, over the. So I think we should build something that lasts. Um, secondly, I think that that you know, if this were a utility building uh, on you know East Francisco, it would be in amongst a whole bunch of other just utility buildings. It's got a an aesthetic demand on it, which is just the fault of its location. And um, it used to be that public. Uh, cities and towns and they cared about what they built in their structures you know it's one thing to me as an architect working for a private client if you want to you know build something that frankly I don't think is that great looking and you can get it past planning that's that's you it's your private property um, I believe that the board and you know district in general are stewards of, of a, you know, a bigger vision and we need to set a higher bar um, we also have to deal with the reality of 
higher bars in terms of construction costs and you know uh, prevailing wages, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I think being smart about this, uh, but I also appreciate your your point because because um, I do think that uh, given the fact that it is a is a gateway, uh, I go back year, years ago. I sent uh, a note to uh, to Shane with some ideas just to to landscape the area because it's such a you know kind of an important gateway. And I think uh, I would hope that this building even though it would alter the, the path and the use in and, and, and a way that I think would be nice in terms of walk along the, you know, continue to walk along the creek, I would think that it would, it would, people would say, hey, they, you know, they built something you know, out of the ordinary there and it would, you know, they cared. So I just wanted to second that thank you. It was, my dad's a landscape architect, so I grew up with watching him do all the CAD stuff, and this is way better than anything that it was in the early 80s, and so I was super impressed. Clearly a lot of time and effort, and a lot of walking through, talking to our you know, constituents in the area, making sure that their voices are heard, and I love the sight line, I love the cross sections, I love the fact that you walked through with the 3D, because for people who can't just visualize, it totally made a difference, and um, taking into consideration your aesthetic as an architect versus the concerns of lowering ceilings and the needs of our employees and the health benefits for our employees that long term we don't have to pay health issues for not having good, safe, positive working environments. I really, really appreciate it and I appreciate Eric and the board's real dedication to doing iteration after iteration after iteration to make sure this is get done right in our really nice panel, so. Thank you, Linda, have you ever Yeah, um, the material storage. How do you plan to store sand on top of gravel? Well, that's, that's easy. I mean, you can, you can use tarps to, to, you know, for if that's the type of storage, you can actually build a bottom to the, to the bin. That could be a plywood, uh, you know, bottom. You can put a concrete pad if you need to in those areas. You can put down concrete um, pavers. That are that are you know butted against each other to give you a hard surface, but um, you know that to me would be a development, a detailed development based upon if they want to, for example, build in three, you know, if, if these are accurate, Luke, and you want to continue to, to keep these three bins of that size, I would you know go to the next level of saying, okay, how can they fit in here and access it with the uh, you know with the hauler, and um, but obviously that would get you can't paid. store dirt on top of gravel. I, that's what I'm saying. When it wouldn't be gravel if that's the requirement in that specific area. You could do concrete blocks, you could do concrete pavers. You could go. If you knew it was dedicated for a long time, you could do a, a well, right slab. Right now, it's on gravel. They have the storage bins for materials on, I mean, on concrete. Yeah. So you could you could absolutely do that. What I what I'm saying is that in, again, in my experience, when you commit yourself and say. You know what? There were always going to store gravel or store, store sand in this one location, and so go ahead and pour you know a, a concrete base there. You know, months later you might find that it doesn't make sense for you to store sand, and it's better to just bring it in from offsite when you need it, and then it would be better to not have poured concrete sand, but uh, poured concrete slab, and to use pavers instead. So I think I think that's a you know a very legitimate uh, programmatic question that um, would be applied to this design or. If the other designs, uh, I have a simple yes or no question. I don't, I don't have any Do the roll up doors, <laughs> do the roll -up doors require electricity? Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, that's. that's so last, that, I'm asking a question. Well, all roll up doors do not require electricity. You can have roll up doors that you manually lift, but uh, if, if that's what the staff wants to do, and, and uh, but you know. The, the building will have electricity, so they will have the option to have them be powered. And the other thing is, would you go back to that picture where we were asking, or Irv was asking about the width, because sure. I still don't believe you gave us the proper width. Uh, what, what width are you looking for? I'm what? looking for the width from the outside of the building over to the middle of, middle of the building. From uh, the outside, where your pointer, no, 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 forget about the right side, the middle. Yeah. The, from the outside of the building, right there, all the way down to the outside of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, because the, you subtracted over here instead of adding. No, so, I, I've got yeah, 30, 39 foot. 
the way that these programs work is that it's an automated program. You 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 click a point here, you pick a point there, it actually tells you the, the Okay, well in the middle. So, in, in so the middle, from, the outside, from this outside wall. Down to the other outside Which is wall. this mark right here, which is this tick mark here. It's up around this end, but it's the same dimension all the way across. Uh, is uh, thirty I'm asking about 39 the width. Eight. That's okay. the length. I'm asking about width. No. <laughs> no. Let him finish. From, Just the width. from this point <laughs> to the end of the roof is 39 foot. So bear with me for a second. To the end of the roof, the overhang is 39 foot 8 minus uh, 3 feet over the uh, columns here. So that's 36 foot 8 minus about another 8 inches. So let's just call it from the outside of this building to this outside of this building, 30. Uh, 36 feet. Well, how can that be if, if those are 36 feet, but they're the green part? Because that's column to column. This is the column that's in the middle of this wall. That's 12 feet to the next column. Because from a structural engineer's standpoint, what they want to know, uh, and um, when I do these drawings, I do them thinking, what's the next step going to be? What's the structural engineer going to be okay, so looking at? So from the column to column, it's 20 to 12 foot, but the column is outside of the the outer walls, 36. 36. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just uh, wanted to comment. I love how much experience you have and that you commented on things like acoustics and information that I, as just watching the presentation, really impressed me that you knew and that you have taken into account. And that was just one example, but there were many others where you said, uh, I've looked into this, I've talked to these people, I have this experience. Yeah. I think that's why. When your house, uh, when dumb. your backyard butts up against Lucas Valley Road, you really <laughs> learn about acoustics. A <laughs> <laughs> few people have built a, a sound wall against it, and I can tell you, like, it's a huge difference. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. So I, but again, that was just one example. You mentioned it several times throughout your presentation that from your experience. Would anybody else have to? Question for you, Bill. Is this building or section I'm going to be heated, and is there going to be an office in there? This because somewhere in the previous I had seen there was going to be an office in the building. Yeah, so, so this, this portion here. So when I say condition space, that means heated, heated air conditioned. You know, okay. But so of the, of the part that's under roof, roof being from there to here, minus the eaves, and then this half of it is all non-heated, open, okay. open air, right? This portion is the workshop, and that's that's heated. Th this in blue is the uh, 820 square feet yeah. of workshop space. This break room, and so take out that tool storage, take out the restroom and this little closet, that, that break room is essentially the use that they have in the current trailer, which is break room, office, I mean, it's office means a bunch oh, of okay. papers and that probably should be thrown away. Computer, so, computer, um, that doesn't work. So, uh, um, so everything is, has, has been combined into that, and that's essentially 12, 12 mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. 12 by 10. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, Bill, I was about to recognize someone else. Um, so you jumped in ahead of Thank you. No, I think I thought the presentation I think you did a great job, and I feel like I have much more clarity. And I appreciate you taking in a, a lot of feedback that we provided. Um, a couple of questions and points that I just wanted to just double click on. So, in terms of the height, I know you brought it down one foot. Functionally, it is 12 feet, 13 feet, or is like it's you cannot achieve any of what you have right now if you were to adjust the, the height lower. And, and just from a, a high level perspective, you know, I, you know, just background being it as it's my backyard, I appreciate that, it's at, that some people go, oh, well, minimal obstruction. I think given that it's my backyard and the reason I purchased the house is I walk in there and it's an oasis. Like you don't even, like I literally could not even, I, I didn't even realize when we purchased the home without further investigation that I even noticed that that shed at its current height with its brown, um, colors that I couldn't see it. So with saying that, okay, you can only kind of see it now, um, especially when winter comes, we have all deciduous trees, it's going to be a very di different situation. So going from a, where we're sitting against the park, you know, not ever having to worry about the viewscape to now having to worry about it, that's the perspective of I'm coming from just from a view viewscape perspective. So um, 
I just want to make sure that I, I understand the obstruction is minimal, but from a binary perspective, from you know Oasis to now, it's we know something, and there's a there's a building in our backyard. I think it's just a difference from 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 our perspective, and also from the monetary value of our home. So this is selfishly thinking from our own backyard, and, and um, that's where some of the feedback is coming from. So from back to the height. Um, I just wanted to give that color first. Sure, thanks. Yeah, and I appreciate that, and I hope you respect the fact that I'm just um, arguing. I have to mm -hmm. consider what you're, you're proposing, and, uh, and, and any building is going to be something rather than not a building. <laughs> um, uh, this this is this was drawn uh, from your uh, this this is your backyard mm -hmm. fence yeah. uh, as as I as I had measured it, um, and the. Current, as I said, the current trailer, which is the ridge is right at that location, is slightly higher. Um, so the current trailer goes from here to maybe about here. So granted, there is a further extension of roof, which is something you would, you know, see at some point. Um, uh, and I, you know, in, in terms of the, I guess I have to go back to your. Well, I, uh, let, me, let me address the, the, the height, the height just as an, as an objective, functional, functional thing. The, uh, the tallest vehicle that the district has is 9 foot 6 to the top of the cab of this tractor, and, and which is basically what this door is. Uh, and given that you need at least a couple of inches for the, the door uh, you know, mechanism itself to, mm -hmm. to roll up, um, it's, it, Seems to me that that this is the lowest functional point for the for the roof at that location at that point now. So I would not recommend that the district, you know, go go with a further lower roof. So it's less about the slope for drainage. It's primarily for the height for the height of the vehicle. The slope. So the slope for drainage gets into a bunch of different factors. You obviously want to have the greatest slope. We're already way less than what. We prefer to have in terms okay. of a, a least expensive kind of a roof, like an asphalt shingle roof. Uh, we basically can't do it because we've already tilted the thing down too far. Um, we've gotten down to a point where uh, we're getting into flat roof territory, where you you know you pretty much might have just a flat roof. A flat roof isn't going to help us because it's just going to pick up the other side. And, and frankly, I think you know from the vantage point of this yard, uh, whether this was at 14 or whether it was down further. I'm sorry to sort of counter the argument, but I, I, I'm not seeing that that impact is going to be there because I just don't think the angle of your perception would be would, would be there even in a winter situation. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so that's okay. without being too argumentative. Okay. That's, that's so 14 is, is the lowest you can go is what I'm going to say. Okay. And then for the color of the roof, is that, is that design aesthetics down the way? I think it's no, it's, it's a, a, exactly, yeah. And, and uh, the... Um, so the, the conversation there and the decision tr uh, you know, tree there has to do with efficiency of the roof because you're going to probably be impacted less by a darker roof than by a brighter roof. Uh, you know, solar uh, passive uh, reducing heat gain would, would call for a white roof, yeah. which obviously you would want to avoid. So I would, and what I even modeled, <laughs> what I said to the model, uh, or building the model was, you know, like the roof's going to at best be a, a medium gray. Okay. Uh, and, and I did the same thing, uh, it would be a, a modified bitumen, uh, bitumen roof, uh, and you have the choice of different color ranges from black to, to white. Um, I just did it a, a couple years ago where we, we chose that for that very specific reason. Okay. Um, and then for the trees, I saw that you added a couple of trees, thank you for doing that. I think there's nine that we've counted in our, in our backyard. And I think the footprint of the trees, some are smaller and some are larger. And I guess <coughs> even in our property, the overhang is pretty significant. And I guess my question is, is will there be any anticipated trimming? Because that, that's part of the viewscape. And then also, if a lot of those trees are overhanging the existing yard, are those all going to have to be cut back too? Or is the facility OK with all the leaves falling into the the new facility. Yeah, I don't think I. Um, okay, so the let me look at the plan. So I went back specifically to look at that because I was concerned about two things. One was the uh, one was the number and state of the trees that were along here, um, 
and the other one was the uh, the water that was showing up on, on this side. Um, so first speak to the trees, uh, and these were as close as I could get, just eyeballing them. <coughs> um, these are young enough that they certainly wouldn't, you wouldn't want to trim them because uh, you wouldn't want to affect them during you know construction that way. The way that they're growing up, um, I don't think trimming them in terms of the impact on the building would matter. It would just be maintenance of you know proper trimming of trees, which okay. around here we don't really get around to doing that much. But the eastern <laughs> one, <laughs> but the eastern <laughs> ones you don't anticipate if they are overhanging the roof or the yard. No, well, so the mature ones again. Like if my concern were to to keep those trees healthy, I wouldn't I wouldn't trim them just okay. because I didn't want to pick up leaves in the in the courtyard. Okay. Uh, in fact, I, I think what's going to happen is because this one will be gone. You know, the problem ones are the, are the pines, and so you know that would be definitely a problem destroying the roof. Uh, and and same thing with this one. So 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 it's fair to assume that there will be no modification to any trees outside of the two pines highlighted. Yeah, I don't I, I don't see it being necessary at all. And in fact, I, I, my recommendation would be that an arborist report you know have that be documented as part of the set. Okay. Um, and in terms of um, the soundproof walls, that sounds fantastic. I think that was one of our bigger concerns in terms of the, the break room and sure. people hearing someone flushing the toilet, you know. Um, and then um, for the lights, when, I don't think you touched on the lights. Yeah, the I, I, and I heard uh, that was mentioned recently, and it's not something, again, different overlay of, of part of the pro process. Okay. But I went over uh, late one evening um, when I was checking out some of the existing conditions and it got dark when I was you know writing my notes and um, there's no there's no lights over there yeah now. I think it's just a it's a south facing light right now. right so yeah. I don't I don't think there'd be any reason there's not okay. you know workers aren't working there at night they're actually leaving pretty early and so um, yeah, okay. like a bunch of light that comes on once in a while I think it's mostly, is it, yeah. isn't it mostly for the kid to periodically right. I mean, from a security standpoint. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, yeah, 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 no, yeah. To go back. I imagine, if, I imagine a motion of sensor, just yeah. security yeah. one yeah. inside the fence area might be smart, but, yeah. okay, okay. Um, and then the last thing in turn, I guess there's two things. So in terms yeah. of the fence bordering our property and the current maintenance facility, we have a gate that we can easily come in and out, right. and for more or less, it's not going to be as operable going forward. And I guess the second part is around the fence piece. Is there considerations in terms of fence replacement um, as it relates to the gate may, may not be operable anymore that made it easy to get in and out of the park? And then secondly, from the height of the gate to, to further mitigate the, the view of, of the new facility. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the gate is, yeah, is right the at this right very there. end. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, as, you know, so the building, and this is the overhang of the actual wall of the building, this is the existing trailer, and your, your property is here. So I, I I think that the impact of the actual building... Or the property goes to the... To the that probably gets all the way down there, but in terms of the, you know, I'm sorry, in terms of the roof, because this doesn't have any roof over it, so you mm -hmm. have to see this part, right? Yeah. But in terms of the roof and the fall up, um, but the impact of the existing trailer relative to the property line and everything else and your gate, I think it doesn't change. Okay. The only thing that changes is that at a certain point around here, the pitch starts to get high enough. Um, and I, anyway. So, but I don't see a, I don't okay. see a, a change to that gate uh, okay. in terms of your access. In terms of uh, the district providing, I, I was thinking of that uh, it, it's often the case with, between private properties that there are some mitigating measures that, that does the neighbor provides to the owner provides to the neighbor. In this case, I think there'd probably be a legal problem with uh, public funds being gifted. Um, so I don't know if that's possible, but I would think that any landscaping that's on district property is, is would not be a prop, you know, could be a part of the project. So, so I guess my, that ties into my last question. So, in terms of the yeah. viewscape right now, it's hard to see the. The, it's it's mitigated to a degree right now. It's because most of the, the plants and trees in our backyard are deciduous. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of evergreen. So I guess the question is, as part of this design, can I expect, or w to what degree can I expect evergreen trees to be planted to mitigate that, that modified view? Maybe a great push for a landscape architect okay. to figure out. But I guess is that comes down to, is there going to be enough budget? So like, I just want to be careful of like, all of a sudden, the money's all spent. It's like, oh, sorry. You well, know, fortunately, you... in this case, I mean, the one benefit of it being a CSD is that there are half of the 
uh, you know, what's provided is landscaping and okay. landscaping care. And okay. So there's plenty of opportunities to improve specific things like okay. that in the okay. future. Absolutely. Right. And can, I, can, I, can I address two things really quick on that? Just, Eric, I, it's a little, I don't know if it's any console to you, but where the bathrooms proposed, there actually is an existing bathroom in that exact same spot in that little modular unit okay. um, with a window. And to Bill's point, we took a lot of time and thought into sound insulation. Okay. And the new facility, which will be far superior to the other one. Um, and then the one thing that I would also envision actually coming out is there's an old useless utility pole that sits over there that serves yeah. right no purpose at this point in time. Um, that would most likely be. <coughs> I will uh, mention something in terms of, uh, I said the second thing I wanted to look at was the water that was over here, and it, it seems as if that's your irrigation yeah, well, water. We had a gardener come by two days ago, and it, it's not ours. Okay. So well, we've then, already followed the line. And, I, I was and I was told that there was, there was you know, yeah, it's from right, both sides it's, that were? Yeah, it's, so it's it might right be, at the end, yeah. It might be coming from the other property as well. Yeah, I just wanted to address that because it's... It just was abnormal to me that it would be in, in the yeah, driest we, part of the year we would have. Yeah, we checked have. irrigation and it's not us. So. I did talk to the staff about it. I think we dealt with it. All right, Stephen, you have any? Yeah, <clears throat> I have a couple questions, a few comments. and uh, So the first thing, uh, question-wise, or a request, um, you talked about a uh, smaller resolution uh, image for 8 by 11 but you really can't read that, and so I request that you, you do a low-res and a high-res version so you can actually read what the dimensions are. Is that possible, Eric? The goal is to be able to print something that you know on the signboard out there that is legible, readable. Uh, obviously, it's not going to get me bigger than about 11 by 17, given the restrictions, but... Well, uh, they're, they're legible on the, on, when they're printed. Yeah, it's a specific and thing I asked uh, Bill about. It, it, maybe for your eyes, but for... I mean, I'm sure if you will be able to expand... <laughs> Paid a lot of money for these guys. Right? Right. Right. Large, the on the screen, right? Well, I, I, okay, I, and I've tried that, and I, I've had difficulty with it, and one of the reasons... I, I, what I really want is there not to be any any disagreement on what the dimensions are. That seems to be a point of conflict right now. It shouldn't be. We should, we should all agree what the dimensions are. And so having something legible where you can actually read it is really important. So if possible, Eric, uh, if you could put a high resolution file, full architecture resolution, and then the resolution that you would prefer for printing out, that would be uh, not difficult to do and, and very appreciated. Uh, uh, so uh, the other a couple other questions. First of all, you, uh, you talked about uh, several vehicles needing to be stored outside. The dump truck won't fit in. The, the tractor uh, may fit in. Um, uh, and the 22-foot uh, F-250 is going to have difficulty with... I'm sorry, I, I, that's not what I mentioned. I, I'm mentioning it because you have 12 foot, 12 foot spans there. Now you can can get them in there for sure, but a parking space, a large parking space is nine foot by 18 for code. So 12 feet. Is yeah, yeah. Okay. So so, but you're also talking about backing up. You're also talking about other equipment there. It's you just need space around it. So I, I okay. I don't. I'm really not trying to get argumentative here, but I'm really trying to understand what your thought process is. So some of those um, vehicles will not be in that yellow area. They'll be parked elsewhere. And where on the site plan are, are they planning to be located? Uh, those vehicles can completely fit within, if not in underneath this uh, covered space, then within the yard space. Uh, and so the smaller ones could be back here as well. So the bigger ones could come in from this side too. But Everything can be contained, all the vehicles can be contained within the courtyard space and or the, the uh, storage space. Okay. So, and at the very least what that means compared to what's currently there now uh, is that they will be behind the locked uh, gate versus this being exposed. So someplace behind the locked gate is where they'll, they'll be. I, I mean, I, having driven a truck, I understand what the challenges are. Um, anyhow, um, so 
In terms of aesthetics, I would agree with other commenters that it, it's a very appealing building and looks great. Um, it's something that we should consider, um, but maybe for a multifunction room, um, but as a, uh, as a working uh, area, I, I just think it's, you've got a lot of limitations there for vehicle movement, material movement, um, uh, you know, you're going to have to dodge those poles. You're going to have to dodge other workers inside the shop. Um, the, and the reason why side access, side access garage, garages are in virtually every other community is because they're so efficient. Um, now, there was a concern raised about backing up. That's very easily addressed. You have a fenced area in front of that. Uh, maybe 20 feet area could be a chain link fence it could be something um, but that's how you take care of keeping pedestrians out it's not that's that's really not an issue that hasn't been thought of and addressed before so so you might still need that that compound but but it would be uh, it would be a, a more permeable surfaces so, so you've got uh, a smaller building and more permeable surface now, where is the, uh, you're talking about the workshops, and we've got painting, we've got welding, we've got uh, woodworking, um, other stuff. I, I, I'm not sure what other items that they do, and I don't know how many times a month they do them. Uh, maybe Luke can address how many times a month they're uh, uh, actually in a workshop working on a monthly basis, is it a day or two days? And I mean, it's not. I see them mostly out in the field, so I, I gotta wonder. Uh, no, I mean, it's several days a week they're doing something inside. Um, the current shop is not conducive to doing indoor work, so they do a lot of it outside. Um, okay. Or they would have preferred to do it in a shop. Sure, sure. So uh, these uh, activities have ventilation requirements. Uh, they create air pollution, um, and I, one of the concerns, in addition to the movement, is indoor air pollution issue. You've got, now you say you're not going to use the, the, the path in the middle and drive trucks through, uh, but when they do that, that's going to create a, a health hazard for the workers. Um, so where is the, where's the ventilation equipment, and where, where is that all going to go, and have you figured that that piece of it out. Stephen, yeah. can I have well maybe uh, address it in a short Yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah. we'll move on because I think there's other people, there are other people also. Sure. Yeah, having, having well, actually, I have a, some uh, another comment too. Having a, I've worked with a lot of garage um, designs, and, and you have two ways to address it. Um, you know, first way is is open air um, spaces, which is what this whole 1,300 square feet is. Obviously, it's completely um, open air. And then uh, this side has, has the best sort of cross ventilation possible, which is a natural ventilation with those two. Regardless of that, there's going to be requirements as a workshop, as per the building code, to have X amount of uh, cubic feet movement of air uh, exchange. Okay. And you just follow the code uh, for the particular use in the same way that you follow the code for, for say, you know, uh, if there's welding going on, it's got requirements for, I mean, let alone OSHA you know, <laughs> concerns. But, um, all of those are detailed code requirements that. Okay. And dust dust collection. Sure. I mean, if that's if, sure. If there's if there's machines that, that have that, you you know collect that. Um, all of that stuff is, is regular. Okay. So the other issue is is um, move. You're, you're in, uh, you, you've let other people speak for quite some time. I do have a few more <laughs> issues. Um, so um, so. Now, where's the material storage going to be? I mean, project material storage. Well, there's different types of project material storage currently. Okay. Then there's, there's you know, woods and wood and boards and pipes you know, that and that pipe. sort of thing. Where's yeah, that? Exactly. So, so there's, you know, it's assumed that um, you know, all along, all along this wall uh, is is, uh, which is also why I want you know to get a little bit of height in there. <coughs> is uh, room for material storage that really needs to be in that. Um, conditioned area and it shouldn't be exposed to, to moisture. There's you know, the opportunity to build storage along these walls if it's needed as well. Um, in the courtyards, you could 
you know, utilize the, the walls of the courtyards of you know, fences too. And it's, you know, as I said, in, in my experience, there's, uh, you know, they'll, they'll move into this and it'll be really neat and tidy and after a few weeks they'll realize, you know, how to best utilize all the nooks and crannies and, um, it will be still being tied. Still being tied. Well, I, 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 okay. But, so, you know, sure. The, 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 the only, the only other, the only uh, counter, uh, you, you have, if, what this does is it forces you to utilize the storage along the walls. This is obviously going to be a much lower wall than, you know, than this wall. Okay. But it forces you to use these as best as possible, to use all this as best as possible for the employees to determine. How much area they need to lace things out and for, say, uh, you know, uh, you know steel saw, saw or a table saw versus, you know, how much area they need for tool storage. The only counter ability uh, to provide is more square footage. And I, I, I think well, I, the I post here is something that's Yeah, I would challenge Thank that. Thank you so much. At this point, I really beg you to well, why, other people. Yes, like but you, you did you interrupt other people like that? Um, I don't think you did. So I, I just have a few more points, and I'll, I will be brief. Um, so when you load, um, so basically the, the chief uh, crit criticism I have of this is the workflow is, is really, it's very constricted. It's a, it's a very difficult workflow pattern. Um, and if you've worked in a wood shop, you had benches, you had projects, you kind of understand why. Uh, you know, um, I, I think for the moment we need to forget about um, aesthetics and we need to look let's start with the workflow you talk about well they're just going to throw stuff in well no, no, no I think, I'm sorry I didn't, I didn't okay I well there, it's going to be messed up and oh, what I what I would I would counter with you, is that you actually start with the work areas and then you design around the work areas um, like you would for a kitchen for example so I, I Stephen, I'm sorry. there are issues um, that really are really question? not uh, solved with this, and your answer. But let me let me just say, and I'm, I'm sorry. Again for my yeah, no, that's sure okay. Um, so, uh, you know, w whenever you, what I mentioned, sort of moving through these iterations of the design um, and moving from a sort of big picture down to a specific detail, some of the stuff that you're you're talking about uh, happens at that detail uh, level. So right now, uh, we started with an idea of gross square footage. And right. a general access from certain points. You know, if this were, if this moves forward in a way, we could certainly, and it would be wise to do this. I do this in residential projects with kitchens all the time. When we start to talk about where's the sink, where's the, you know, where, where's the uh, uh, fridge, etc., and then we go down into the drawers and what's stored in the drawer in right. you know, each individual drawers, and we actually get into that workflow. But you, and and that may come back and alter some of the assumptions like where these man doors are or where the, maybe there's not a, a central door here, maybe there's just access on the other side. Maybe this is moved over to another bay. Yeah, all but those the, things are at a, sorry, all those things right. are at a level, at a next level that you, you, have to, you have to do that within the construct of uh, a total agreeing upon a, you know, a gross square footage first. And then you can get into that level. So I just, I, 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 I'll finish my comments right now. Um, so the Ford F-250 is not going to shrink to 17 feet. The, the, these, are the, these are the limitations. These are the essential tools that the entire building needs to be built around, in my view. It needs to be built like you would build a carpenter's tool chest with the idea of workflow and efficiency and organization. That's the kind of facility every workman wants to uh, uh, work in. Uh, you know, the, the space looks great, but it's just, you're not going to get around the limitations uh, that you've imposed on this. So. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, I just wanted to say that I appreciated the three models. I'm a house that has no trees <laughs> and will be looking right at it. I'm Glad that you lowered the roof, and I hope the board takes into consideration planting some evergreen so that I don't have to look at the building. But otherwise, I appreciate tonight's Thank you so presentation. Much. Thank you. Is there anybody else? So, um, given the time, it's 10 of 10, and we're way past the um, agenda times. Um, I'd like to 
conclude this segment. Thank you so much, Bob, for coming, for answering all the questions. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, who came just to hear this highlight. And um, I invite you to attend other board meetings. We always look for audience. It makes it so much more entertaining. Thank you. Moving on to um, item E3. Um, do we need to discuss this given that it was only in June? Uh, this, this item was only added because it was uh, actually brought to my attention that I neglected to put them in the last uh, agenda since that uh, meeting and there's been no other ESS meeting, so this is strictly informational at this point. Fantastic, that's what I like to hear. As we don't so, need to discuss yeah. it? We Excuse do need to me. discuss it. <laughs> Real quickly, yeah. uh, the, the minutes say that nothing was happening because we hadn't received the feedback from the city of San Rafael yet. As of June 11th. On June 11th, as providing chief services. We now have that information, so I would request that between now and the next meeting, that there be a, a meeting so we have some information for our next meeting on this subject. Is that reasonable? I would say that that's still a working document, that there hasn't been anything finalized at this point in time based on the feedback that we've given them back as working with them as a staff. So then there's no reason to have any. Uh, Another committee meeting between now and the next meeting? I don't believe so. Okay. So I guess the ball is in the other court. They've been holding it for two weeks, three weeks. They had a couple of guys with uh, Jim and Chris from home on vacation. All right, so hopefully that, that's what we're waiting for a response from the other side. All right, that moves us to E4, which is the district manager report, and I think you provided um, the report in the packet, so I don't want you to read through it. It's way too late, unless you would like to highlight certain items. No, the only big thing in here is Paula's retired. Because, yeah, we're going to miss her. Uh, I but, know. You know, that's actually a big deal. She's you know, been here since 1989. Um, and what I also put in there is uh, Carolyn has expressed uh, interest and a desire to transition into that position. Luke and I have spent a lot of time talking about it as well as with Carolyn, and that move makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways, and I believe we're gonna move forward in that direction, which is gonna open up her position, so I'm gonna be uh, reviewing the post on that very quickly. Thank you. I told Paul if he was doing it, I'm gonna retire. Okay. It's only 29 years, I'm like, what's wrong with 30? Um, <laughs> That moves us to item F, which is the fire department letters. Uh, I'll give you a quick note version. Is it's, uh, it's wilding season. Um, we all know about that. Yeah, it's fire season gets really bad. We have people out, they're back now. It's kind of died down around the state, but it's going to pick back up again as it always does. Um, I'm fielding call, multiple calls daily about vegetation management complaints. Um, there's three current projects going on around it. Our two communities, CSA 13 and uh, Marinewood, and there's been a couple more plans. So, so wildlife, wildlife uh, fire is the big yeah. item. Um, yeah. Excuse me. Uh, two things. One, in the minutes under item two, Linda made a comment. Uh, it's commented on measure parcel tax. Is that, was, should that say measure A? Measure A. Measure A, yeah. that. So there's two, just to clarify for you, because the Park Commission did not talk about F3, but we will do that in September. And the Park Commission is going to talk about uh, the use of measure A funds, because when they brought something up, it's been used towards education management projects in other jurisdictions. So the Park Commission will deal with it in September and bring it to you in September. Maybe. Great. And I apologize for that, or I thought when, we, when I answered the questions with you, we were good. Um, we're just getting the ammunition to start asking questions well, here. But I'd like to hear the comments from the fire commission first. I, I will do that next time. Is there any indication that the use of Measure A funds for fire, um, you know, for vegetation management is restricted to park areas in the city of San Francisco? I have to read the code exactly, but um, yes, I would say that's probably the case. Okay, thank you. And it's trust me, I get Measure A. I know yeah. you have big plans for it, and the money is tied up 
the project. So I, I get all that, but we're going to have a discussion. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Is the cost benefit analysis part of this section or is that next? Cost analysis? Uh, the value benefit analysis. Shared services. Shared. Is that oh. is that part of this section? Because I wanted to comment on it. Um, we were still kind of in a fire activity um, summary and okay. report, but yeah, we can move to the shared services agreement. Excuse me. One last thing on the chief report. Yes. Is the kitchen finished? It was supposed to be finished yesterday. It's about 82 We're it's about 82 percent. We're waiting on some tiles, some tile grout, um, and the fridge filter and water system to get up to speed. Right? Do you think this week? The water system? Well, it's just because the water's got to run through the filter and the fridge before you can start drinking it and making ice cubes with it and stuff. We're supposed to clean it out three or four times. We're getting there. We're not there 100 percent. We're about 82. Okay. I just think it would be good for the minutes to show where we are. That's all. That's yeah, no, that, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully next week. I hope so. It's not up to me. Would you, um, <laughs> when it, when it's completed, would you please send? I will absolutely email? send you guys a picture and an email like the day it's done. Ribbon yeah. cutting? No ribbon cutting. Oh come We're on. We're just gonna eat some. No. Steak. Steak. Alright, so any public comment? Any public comment on uh, item F? One and two together. I, I don't I don't know what what the what those are. You mean what he just said? We uh, we were just talking about fire activity summary and the chief report. Yeah, I'm fine with You're that. You're good with that. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, review of current shared services agreement with Senator Bell. Um, Eric, would you like to take? Sure. This item was requested by Director Forbes. Uh, this is a document that Chief Roach and I had put together in terms of a. Uh, fairly confident assessment of the value of the benefits we get from the shared services agreement with Senator Bell. The one thing we didn't really have enough time to do is, and also realize that it's a much trickier equation, is looking at this from the other direction in terms of the value of services Senator Bell gets from the Renwood as a part of this agreement. Uh, but this is, this document here, uh, our educated numbers uh, based on either a very similar arrangements or things that you want. Thank you, Eric. Eric, uh, I could easily probably take up a half hour on this. I think I would much better yeah. yeah. postpone this to the next yeah. meeting when we have the feedback from the party. Right. Huh? Yes. No, I, I totally agree with our opinions. We didn't do, we weren't able to get to it in uh, August, but we got to do it in September. I okay, have so notes, I have handouts, all sorts of things ready to so go. So let's, let's, let's pick wait, it up let's wait next, next yeah. time. Right. And uh, now Stephen would like to comment. Yeah, I would like to comment um, because um, actually, I, I, first of all, I think this is a helpful document to have. However, one of the um, logical errors in it is you're, uh, we're getting 173000 worth of uh, benefits, but we're still taking care of 60% of their calls, or 60% of our calls are going into their district. So the way I would look at this is, yes, it's 173,000, but 60% of it goes back over the hill to San Rafael, so the actual uh, benefit is, would be, uh, what would it be, like 70,000. So I don't. I uh, on, uh, so, and then as far as the um, the value that we provide, I think the value that we provide is 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 enormous um, in terms of we're housing everybody. We've got equipment. We've got uh, we've got trained staff. We're making calls that they're not making. So whatever it costs them to run a fire department, uh, you know, figure out what their calls are worth and. The number of calls we, we do in, in their area, that's the value that we provide. So uh, I, I think you can, you can manipulate this all different ways, but uh, let's not, um, let's not overfigure this because, because we are actually paying out a lot more than we're receiving back. Very good points, Stephen. Thank you. Um, Stephen is right. There is absolutely value in what yeah. our department provides no, to really see certain problems. And that's what I, what I let off with when I stated too that we just that is also a harder to quantify and it's uh, something cheap enough to work. Right. Okay. 
So then the date of the next fire commission meeting is September 4th? Correct. Um, we good on fire? Oh. We can move to item G1, um, <coughs> which is the uh, rec and park report. Please do not read the report. <laughs> we all have it. We all know how to read. You're good. Um, any questions? On the rec report? You're just saying read it? The, uh, I wouldn't want him to read the report. Right. I can give you the, the, the salient points uh, quickly. It's events going great. Brew Fest was a huge success. Uh, really good time. Hopefully, you know, I saw some of you out there. Um, there is one more music in the park coming up a week from Friday. Uh, the Eagles cover Eagles cover band. So come out for that. Uh, the summer's been uh, hugely successful. Staff have been great. Uh, Robin and Lacey have done an amazing job with the camping pool staff. Um, things have just been safe and fun, everything's been full, and um, I'm really proud of the staff and, and really happy with the way things have gone. We've got one and a half weeks left, and we're just pushing through to fall. Uh, questions about recreation? Thank you for the recreation program. Seriously, summer camps is a savior as well. Uh, you're welcome. Um, as far as the Parks and Maintenance Department goes, uh, we have been uh, doing a lot of irrigation repair, um, cleaning, weeding, trying to spruce things up, uh, trying to recover each week from the camps the week before, and um, uh, got some projects coming up that you know, we're trying to get the community center um, fixed up after all the use, and the uh, same thing with the pool and the, the parks, so lots of coming down the pike. Um, the usual after camp cleanup. Exactly, yeah. So. Anything from the board, too? No. Steven? Yeah, so a couple questions. First, with the rec uh, department. You say uh, Brewfest was a huge success. What were the ticket sales for, roughly? Um, <clears throat> we get back to you on the actual uh, attendance. I'll take out that number, but I'm happy to email you tomorrow. I don't have that at the top of my head. Um, yeah. Cool. You don't have any. I think we had like 180 glasses, right? Yeah. I was there. I don't yeah, know. I have it in front of me, but I can look that up. And yeah, I okay. That. And I assume we had uh, donated uh, beer again. Um, okay, and um, I'm going to just comment on this. I mean, we have way too many alcohol related events. I know they're fun for some people, but. Uh, with the rate of alcoholism and, and binge drinking in the the, uh, uh, the county, I just think that we need to, you know, not do so many. So that's my little spiel there. Is there, uh, is there a way we could get some pot? <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, we should have applied for a dispensary license. Yeah. We'd be rolling in it, literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could do it out of the fire department. <laughs> Is that considered an species? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> non-native. Meeting will take a different new meaning. And <laughs> um, okay, so, and, and then the, the question regarding park maintenance. I noticed that over at the pool there's some activity going at the far end. It looks like they dug a big hole. What's that all about? Um, we just had a, a, a couple of valves that were leaking for the irrigation for the pool, so they put in um, a new um, shut off that we didn't have prior. We just shut off all the water to work on that. So put a new shut off in to, to isolate that and replaced a couple of valves that were um, leaking and malfunctioning. Okay. And then uh, just in general, I, you know, I've been observing what's going on. The, the camps seem to be well run and kids having fun and it's, it's a joy to see. And so, uh, you know, congratulations to you and your staff. You're not disappointing at all. Appreciate that. So. That's all I have to say. All right. So then, um, next part of our meeting is August the 28th. Uh, moving on to H1, which is new and other business. A request for future meeting agenda items. I understand or if you want to talk about the shared services agreement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have that. We have that. Yeah. 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 Um, I would like to please add. Um, for the board to consider a proper way to recognize Paula for the 29 years of service. We have a policy in place, um, the memorial and recognition policy. So uh, considering that, uh, let's let's think about it and uh, pick it up next month, if we may. Um, we'll do that. 
Jeff, do you have a question? Well, I'll probably be working on the latest um, Calpers. CalPERS report and try and have that available. Yeah. You know, the trend analysis over five years and this and that was projected. Um, because Eric was kind enough to forward the reports to me yesterday. So I'll be working on that. Thank you. Hopefully present know, that. That's tremendous work. I mm -hmm. appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Excuse me, I have another item that I was told, I think, to say. Do it now. Next. Next? Recognitions and board. Yes. Board member items of interest. Oh, okay. Yeah. So here we go. Start us off on item one. All right. Just, I, I know the answer to this, and I could either Eric can report it or I can, but we had two encroachment items at the last meeting. And I would like this to clearly show that the residents on the Verbena Court, within a day or so, had all the flagstones removed as requested. So they took care of that issue. And the residents on Las Colinas Avenue, uh, within the time specified by Eric, removed their uh, camper from district property. So we're sort of done with those two things. Right? And I just think the there. minutes yeah. ought to show that so that if there's a question later, we know what happened. I noticed, that, I noticed that the trailer was moved. The, uh, the mother home was moved, yeah. yeah. And I have a, uh, we just need to sign it at this point, but an agreement in place uh, with one Verbena for the right of encroachment uh, that also includes insurance requirements and uh, you know, liability, uh, all of that kind of stuff too. So that's a good idea. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Um, I make a motion to adjourn. You read my mind. Second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm going to get up and party right here.